this uh, regular board meeting for the month of June. And our first item of business on the agenda is to accept the agenda as presented or else to amend it. And I'm not aware of any suggested amendments. We have a motion to accept it as presented. I move that we accept the agenda as presented. Second. That's been moved and seconded. Uh, any further comment or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously. <clears throat> And that brings us to public comment. Is there something from the public to comment? <coughs> Guess yes. not? But no public. Please. So then private guests, private comments. New, new staff introductions then. That we do have. Kara and Zoe here. Kara's going to introduce them. Oh, we're Zoe. sitting the opposite way. I know. Oh. Right. Ah. Making them do the full parade for us. We must be oh, that's because we have a, we must have a movie. <laughs> I should think. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. So I'm here to introduce our wonderful intern. Her name is Zoe Wu, and she comes to us from the U of I in the Landscape Architecture Department. Um, some of the things she's been working on so far are creating a rendering of the corner of Park and Broadway. So right now, Ooh. it's not much, but what's it going to be once we have the path? And how can we make it even more appealing? And how can we make it a gateway into the park so people want to come visit? So that she's in the process of working on that right now. Um, she's organized and efficient. I asked her to research something, and not only did she do that, but she came back with it in a folder with things highlighted with sticky notes on the side. Whoa! <laughs> so I knew where everything was, um, and, and she did a really good job with that. Um, as far as strategic planning goes, that's been a lot of what we're talking about recently, and um, she's been doing some research for that, she got us a booth at the farmer's market so that we can gather public input, not only from UBD events, but from community events as a whole. And um, just other sort of behind the scenes things that would um, not make this, I, if I had to do it by myself, this process wouldn't be necessarily um, going as smoothly as it is so far. Um, and then the last thing I had uh, jotted down is that when we interviewed her, we didn't even tell her much about GIS, but she has leaped into helping us with um, tracking district-wide all of our utilities. So right now, electric and water and cable and everything kind of just exist in people's heads. Shane and Keith know where they are, oh. and there's some old maps that have hand drawings on them, but um, she kind of helped us troubleshoot some things with beginning to set that up and do it in a way that will be accessible online from our phones so when you're in the field you can actually view where the utility lines are wow so, all of that in um two and a half weeks wow. <laughs> and so is there anything that you want to say i prepared a oh nice see she's organized <laughs> um most of things that kara has already said and she gave me a really high um Nice comments, and I'll just say, um, my, hi, my name is Zoe Wu, and I'm intern at the Abrana Park District this summer, and I'm a, also an upcoming senior majoring in landscape architecture at the University of Illinois. Uh, this university has prepared us really well for our future. We learn about design, we learn about technology, construction, plans, and more. Since last year, I have been part of the ambassador team at the Co College of Fine and Applied Arts. From working with people and listening to others, uh, no matter it's in academic projects or issues in my li daily life or in other activities, I'm constantly searching for new, for new and better solutions. That's why, I, that's why I applied to intern at the Park District, because I want to know, learn, know about design and planning and how it will reflect people's needs and practicality. This summer, I have this opportunity to be part of the team that will contribute to the quality of life and health of these residents and responsible for the efficient park and recreation system in Abana. I will be part of this team to work on strategic planning and on planning of other parks in Abana. I'm really enthusiastic to apply my skills to the best of my ability to assist the staff to bring about an attractive and efficient open uh, open space to more members of the community. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome indeed. Awesome. I just want to commend Zoe. When, uh, when we interviewed her, we 
went through a whole series of projects that she could potentially be involved in. A lot of them were kind of the fun, kind of rendering type stuff that we expected a lot of our um, applicants would gravitate towards. We asked her what she was most interested in. She said strategic planning, going out and working with the community, learning more about what their interests are, and that, that really spoke Terrific. volumes That's about her, her as an applicant. Great. Thank Great to have you board, Zoe. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Could, could we ask where home is for you? Uh, I came from China. It's a, uh, in a southeastern uh, city. Um, it's, it's in on the oppos opposite of across from Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And I have been, uh, I went to high school in Boston. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What, what, what are parks like mm -hmm. at home? Who um, runs the parks? Does the city run its own parks? The and are there lots of them? What are they like? The government mostly runs their parks. Mm -hmm. And parks in ours are mostly large green spaces and mm -hmm. with lawns and not really, not really a lot of trees. It's usually really, not really shady and is huh. really, like really hot and <laughs> kind of <laughs> at times in summer. And, and is, is that, would you expect to find that all over the whole of, of China or is that just because of the climate where you're from? I think there's a common issue that in the parks in China that they folk, that the design are only on paper, that when, when it is built, that less of the, like, the people's, like, people needs are being cared, like, cared about, like, right. applied on. But at least you have the green space and you can always do things with it once you have it. Well, so. people <laughs> are not. People aren't allowed to walk oh on the lawns God. because <laughs> there are too many people and uh, different uh, cultures. Right. Yes. Oh, would you God. find? Would there be playgrounds for the children? Yes. Ah. Yes, there were. And are they a lot different from American playgrounds? Have oh, you um, what you've seen? Those the typical playgrounds in um, America are well, from what I have seen are ball fields and um, ball fields and other uh, sports fields. And in China, this kind of um, amenities are usually in a separate from mm -hmm. the park system. Like a club, it would be more like a club sport yeah. system. And yeah, yeah. yeah. But how right. about swings and you know merry-go-rounds? Just things for really small children. Are there mm -hmm. other pieces of play equipment for them or not? Some some mm -hmm. parks have them. Mm -hmm. Mostly, well, I would say they will be in neighborhoods. Aha, mm. uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Cool, thanks. No problem. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, moving on then to um, the update report. Roger could put on his other hat if there are any questions. <laughs> <laughs> his old hat, it's good. It's written. Um. <laughs> Just to summarize it, I think we had a, it was a very interesting experience to do this kind of graphic strategic planning uh, process. Um, and you, you didn't know where you were going to end up. And uh, we had one uh, individual on UpDeck that was very, <coughs> very concerned about safety at, at uh, <coughs> Crystal Lake. And she came from a different cultural uh, background and had a, had a perception of Crystal Lake that I had never even thought about. I always think about it as a very busy park. She thought of it as a virtually empty park. And uh, I just thought that was very interesting, you know, that affected her perception of the safety. Uh, but it was a good experience. Uh, I, uh, lots of input from everybody on UpDeck. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the hugest fan of the, the graphic designer approach, but I thought it was really it was really useful and it was it was good because we had done it with mm -hmm. CUSR or we had seen it and mm -hmm. and maybe we had just seen the completed, which I thought was a little too cartoonish. But watching it go together, mm -hmm. I thought was was really useful, and I think everybody appreciated and enjoyed mm -hmm. what they were what they were seeing. So I thought it was it was particularly Did useful because it you can see it up there and it's kind of dressed up a little, so it's not just a Mm -hmm. An another list of, of things. So I, I thought it was a terrific meeting and, myself. And I don't know what your perception was, but mine was we got more, we had more people yeah. provide more <clears throat> input Absolutely. than typically in an UPTAC yeah. meeting. Yep, I agree. I think that's technique, 
tends to work that way. Yeah, you know, I a lot of public does. meetings you'll hear a lot, but it's often from a few people maybe, that, and this process kind of encourages everybody to throw a word or an idea out that ends up on the board, so. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, then what brings us to our consent agenda. And on the consent agenda this evening, our approval of the minutes from the May 1st board study session, the May 8th uh, regular board meeting, and the May 30th special board meeting, <coughs> action to accept the philanthropy report and gifts listed with gratitude, the three monthly reports from the various departments, receipt of those, approval of the monthly paid accounts payable, action on ordinance 2018-05 regarding prevailing wage, which is an annual action required by state law. One of our favorite things. Yes, indeed. And finally, action on a resolution 2018-10 to enter into a tenant lease agreement for 2808 South Ray Street. That's property in, in Meadowbrook Park. So it is the privilege of any commissioner to remove any or all of these items from the consent agenda for separate uh, discussion and action, if they so choose. Is there anyone wishing to uh, withdraw anything from the consent agenda tonight? I move we approve all of the action items on the consent agenda and accept all the information items listed on the consent agenda in an omnibus manner. Second. That's been moved and seconded, and uh, we should do a roll call vote on this. We'll start at my right with LaShonda. Aye. 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 And that carries unanimously with all five commissioners voting. So that takes us to reports. Let's start with financial reports. It's easier over time. <laughs> um, you know I like visuals. I know. Thank, oh. you, Katie. <laughs> Thank, you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. We can see that. <laughs> cool. All right. When I um, as long as she doesn't think of it as dumbing it down. <laughs> as you all know, I wasn't here for the month, the May monthly regular board meeting because I was at the GFOA conference in St. Louis. And I came back and told Tim right away, I was like, I was really excited because I went to a couple sessions about pre presenting um, financial reports graphically. And so I tried to incorporate that <laughs> for a little bit. Did not. And I know Meredith's always asking for more <laughs> pictures like this. So I, I tried um, to do a little bit of that this time. And I have some ideas in my head not to do it every month, but definitely when we present the audit report, because there was mm. some ideas about, you know, tracking your fund balance over time, over multiple fiscal years and things like that. So um, I just created four pictures just to give you some ideas um, of the kinds of things that I learned. And this is just a summary uh, that sums up the FY18 performance for the end of the fiscal year. This particular graph is just showing budget versus actual for revenues for our four main working funds, uh, general rec museum and indoor pool. So you can see basically in all areas, um, we beat our budget for revenues. And similarly for expenditures, we beat our budget for expenditures, meaning we didn't spend as much as we budgeted. So that um, this chart is showing that as well. The exception would be UIAC, which <laughs> is typical. Um, but really this, this report is actually created prematurely because ultimately um, we adjust our, um, the revenues and expenditures match for UIAC at the end of the year anyway, no matter what, because we have to, <laughs> We have zero that budget out at really the end of the year with our partner shares. So, so this doesn't take into account the the, the new pack. No, that's an FY19 budget, okay. which we will also talk about tonight. Okay, I'm so. ready for that. 
Um, and then this is a different type of chart, and this is just showing on a district-wide basis budget to actual performance. So the revenue, um, the actual revenues are in orange, the budget is in blue. So you can see we didn't make our budget for revenue. This is revenues plus transfers in. Um, that's the best way to show this type of information. So our revenues plus transfers in didn't equal what we budgeted. Some of that is because um, we haven't received all of the grant funds for the ITEP grant that we budgeted that we were receiving. Uh, and some of that's also because we didn't fully transfer in the English fund transfer, transfer for the pool pack replacement, even though we budgeted the whole thing in both fiscal years because we didn't know how it would be split. So, um, and then similarly for expenditures, we, some of that is because we have a lot of capital expenditures that we budget and then as the projects are ongoing they're not spent yet so because capital's mixed into this it's a little bit misleading and also because those transfers in and transfers out are mixed in um, but overall if you really were to compare this to our expe expectations for, 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 for performance we performed better in revenues and expenditures than expected so that's really good news quite a bit better on the revenue side and then finally, I just wanted to show our fund balance growth. The funds displayed in this chart are the ones that are included in our fund balance policy. So we only have five funds that we have a policy about our needs for fund balance. The general fund, the recreation fund, the museum fund, the liability fund, and the IMRF fund. And the definition of what those needs are depends on the fund. So they're all a little bit different. But I just overall wanted to show that those funds have grown over the years since 2014. Um, as the years have gone by, they've increased slightly each year. So I just wanted to demonstrate that. So with that, I'm going to jump into the financial reports, which I prepared for tonight. And since I missed May, you get to hear me talk a little bit longer tonight than normal because I'm going to go over the April performance as well as the first month of the fiscal year performance that we've gone through so far. So the first report I'll be talking about tonight is the April fund balance report. We don't usually produce the fund balance report for the first few months of the fiscal year. So I don't have a fund balance report for May because we wait until the budget's actually finalized before we start producing this report. So the first time you'll see this is when we have our board meeting in August and then I'll pr produce the results through July. Um, so this is the first of two budget reports that I bring to the board each month. And um, this report shows the receipts and the expenditures for the prior 12 month period, the budget for the current period, and the preliminary unaudited results for the 12 months ending April 30th. And I did want to emphasize that these are preliminary results and they're subject to change. And I know for a fact they will change because we're still paying payables. So there'll be more expense going into this budget. We're wrapping up. Usually by the end of June, we're pretty much finished with all of our payables. But I know Andy was still sending some stuff over that he had work that was still happening from April that we're paying for now. So, um, so it's not completely final, but it's pretty close. So... Um, Someone, which is the first page of this report, is all funds except for the Capital Improvements Fund. Revenues for the fiscal year were $9,107,000, which is an increase of $89,000 over budgeted expectations. And expenditures were $8,556,000, which is a savings of $721,000 over budgeted expectations. We have a surplus after 12 months, which means there's an excess of revenues over expenditures of $551,000. And a net change in fund balance shows an increase after 12 months of $520,000. If you switch to page two, this is just the capital improvements fund. So revenues for this 12 month period were 234,000. Expenditures were 794,000 and expenditures exceeded revenues. That means there was a deficit of 561,000. Bond proceeds of 710,000 were received and transfers in of 32,000 were made for a total of other sources of $742,000. This leaves a net increase in fund balance in the capital improvements fund of $181,000. And finally, sum three is the third page and all sum three is, and this is for Roger's sake and those watching at home is just sum one and sum two added together. So um, 
The capital improvements fund tends to cloud up the regular operating budget a bit, so we separate it out on that sum one so you can get a better picture of our operations. But sum three is a district-wide total um, of performance. And I like to point out the very bottom number um, at the bottom of the furthest right column, which shows that after the end of the fiscal year, our ending fund balance is $7,136,000. So, um, and we were budgeting a decrease in fund balance of 655,000 and instead we're looking at an increase of around 700,000. So um, a lot of that's due to good performance. It's also due to um, not spending in the capital improvements fund as much as we'd budgeted. So it, it goes both ways. It's a little bit of both. And following that are these same reports for our main working funds, the general fund, the recreation fund, the museum fund, and the indoor aquatic center. And I don't typically go through those in detail unless there's any questions. So I'll touch very briefly on the budget analysis with history report for April since we talked a little bit more about it already with the charts and um, with the fund balance report. So the, this report shows a historical comparison of the same 12 month period of the current year and the prior three years. So you're kind of getting a full fiscal year picture here. And the first section lists all funds district wide. And if you switch to the middle of page two, in the middle there, there's a summary total of revenue. And this is the total of revenues and transfers in for the fiscal year, which were 12,755,000, sorry, 7, $12,557,000. And then if you switch to page three, the bottom of page three shows total expenditures and transfers out for the fiscal year were 11,856,000 with a surplus at the end of the year of $701,000. And following that, I'm gonna switch over to the May budget analysis with history. And this report is gonna show similar information to the last report except it's going to show a comparison of just the one month of the fiscal year for this year and the prior three years um, and you can kind of compare to see like where we are at this point in the year how does it compare to those prior three years so the first section of this report lists all funds district-wide and total revenues and transfers in for this one month period were 1,939,000 and we've received 5 or 25% of our property tax revenues so far for this year, which is just one individual property tax distribution, which we received at the end of May and we'll receive another large one in June. And then typically it slows down a little bit and we get a big one in September and then they just trickle out after that. You can see at this point in the year so far, all expenditures are running rateably very consistent with the prior three years. And I wanted to also point out that there are a few negative numbers on appearing on this report, which might look a little bit strange. Um, so the column I'm talking about is the, the number column on the furthest left part of the page. Um, you can see on page two, there's a negative revenue of, for interest of 6,997,000. ,000. This is all audit adjusting entries, and that amount is um, interest revenue that was earned um, in FY18, and we accrued the interest at 430, and we won't, but we won't actually receive the cash until FY19. So it's kind of like receiving a credit for it now because we've already recognized it in FY18. So you kind of have the reverse effect at FY19 until it's actually received, and then it evens itself out, and you only received it once. So if we didn't have this negative, you'd have received it twice. So you can't do that. And then similarly, there's quite a few other negative numbers, but they're all related to the same thing. There's a negative transfer from other funds of 28,700. There's a negative donations miscellaneous of 44,983. There's negative contractual service of 18,777. And there's negative disbursements to other funds of $700. And these are all related to the FY18 portion of work that's, that was completed um, as of the end of the fiscal year on the UIC air handling unit. And um, you can see 
uh, but it, we haven't paid for that yet. So we still had to recognize the expense. We had to recognize the partner shares. We had to recognize um, the transfer from the English fund. We had to recognize the transfer from the capital improvements fund. It was, it's a big long mess. Um, I have a template that I use for it. And basically I post it all at 4.30 as though it actually happened. And then I reverse it all at 5.1. And then when it actually <laughs> happens, the, the correct portions of that transaction happened in FY18 and FY19. So it's kind of just one of those accounting nightmares that we work through, but I worked with um, Greg at Martin Hood to you know, go over the procedure with him before I did it and make sure that we're following it pr properly. And so we're all on the same page. So, but that's what all those numbers are <laughs> that are negative. So I wanted to point that out. And finally, if you just wanna flip to the bottom of page three, at this point in the fiscal year after one month, our total expenditures and transfers out for this period are $400,000 with a surplus at the end of May of 1,539,000. Uh, and you can see if you look at the uh, prior three years, that's pretty consistent with where we were. The FY6, the FY17 number, which was two years ago, we hadn't received our, we didn't receive our first property tax payment distribution until June. So that one's really low that one year, but um, the other two we received in May. So any questions about the May budget analysis with history? There might be a lot of questions about it, but I don't know if I'll be able to answer them any more clearly than I've tried, but <laughs> it's kind of a mess. All right. Then now I'm going to present both treasurer's reports, the one from April and then the one from May, and then I'll pause for your approval after I've gone through them. The April treasurer's report shows the amount of cash that the district had on one day, April 30th, 2018. All 24 funds are listed with where the cash is invested for a grand total of $8,870,916.91. If you flip to page two, the middle of page two, the first section at the top lists um, the amounts that we have in interest bearing accounts. So of the $8,871,000 that the district has, $7,210,000 is out in investments. The next section lists interfund loans. As of right now, there, there really aren't any. We have a general fund loan that has uh, permanent balances in the payroll and interim accounts. So that's pretty standard that you see every month and there's no other exceptions to that at this time. And the last page lists the disbursements that occurred in April. And we had total disbursements of funds of $413,000 in April. And now I'll discuss the May treasurer's report as well. So this report shows the amount of cash that we had at May 31st, 2018. And we had cash of $10,358,357.88. And the big difference there is we received our first property tax disbursement. And again, the amount on page two is the amount we have in investments of $8,694,000. There were no changes to our inner fund loans in May. And the disbursements that you see on the May report include all four of the reports that appeared in the uh, consent agenda. It had both April disbursements and May disbursements. Those are all total on this page. Those were all disbursements that were made in, in May, um, but the reports are split based on which fiscal year they were relevant to. And so total disbursements of funds were $739,000 for May. And um, I present these two treasurer's reports for your approval. I move we accept the April and May uh, treasurer's report for audit. Second. That's been moved and seconded. Are there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that carries unanimously. I only prepared one supplemental report of cash for your relief. <laughs> Uh, I just prepared the most recent one, the May report. The supplemental report of cash has the same information as the first page of the treasurer's report, but it groups the information by expected use rather, rather than by fund name. The expected uses are daily operating funds, restricted special needs, and restricted gifts and donations. And you can see on the bottom bold line on the grand total at the bottom, 
that of the $10,358,000 that we had at May 31st, 1,270,000 is restricted obligations, which leaves 9,088,000 available as spendable cash. And finally, I'll, I also only pre prepared the one version of the capital budgets, and that's because the April and the May expenditures appear on this report. So there was no need to prepare any additional reports um, for this month, for this particular version. And the areas where there's been activity on these reports are highlighted with an asterisk symbol. So you can see there's asterisks in both the April column and the May column this time. In the 2018 capital budget, there were, uh, we had transfers from the English fund, which occurred um, for the UPD contribution towards the UIC air handling unit. We received revenues for tributes and expenses were paid towards tributes, the UIC air handling unit, landscaping at Phillips Recreation Center, a new 72 inch mower was purchased and also um, spending occurred on water quality at Crystal Lake Park. In the 2017 capital budget, we received our first reimbursement from IDOT for the ITEP Park Street Path project for $34,000. And um, we had expenditure, oh, and yeah, sorry. And we had expenditures towards tributes, recreation small equipment, ITEP Park Street Path project, the sediment basin, and trees were purchased for Ambux Park. The negative $5,000 that you see twice on this report, um, you can see it under the city contribution for the sediment basin and down in the contingency section for Crystal Lake Park improvements. Uh, both of those numbers are um, the split of the retainage that's payable on the sediment project at the end of the fiscal year. So that's another one of those funky audit entries. The expense is related to FY18. So we credited or we debited the expense at the end of the fiscal year and what we haven't paid it yet. So we credit it in FY FY19, so when the payment is actually made, the expense is recognized in FY18 and nothing is recognized in 19. So that um, negative number just carries forward until the payment's made. Right. And finally, in the 26, does that make sense to anybody else? Um, mm -hmm. It's tough, it's tough. Um, in the 2016 capital budget this month, the expenditures occurred on memorials, construction crew projects, the Phillips Center siting project, and the King Park <coughs> Bank Shot <coughs> basketball system. Oh, yeah, how's that coming? And now Andy and Derek have some updates for you on capital projects. Yep, uh, I'll Ooh. start with. <laughs> it's a marathon. That was a lot. <laughs> uh, Phillips Recreation Center, the siting, um, ending on. <laughs> Depending on weather, should be wrapping up by the end of this week, <laughs> maybe very early next week. Um, the James Room kitchen remodel, um, we had initially geared for a July as our only project uh, item on the agenda for a uh, July board award. That's getting pushed back to the August meeting, um, but we will still have a board award uh, for you. That would be for the repainting of Meadowbrook Park Bridges. So you'll be seeing that in the next uh, board meeting. Um, I wanted to touch base on the Nature Center parking lot bioswales. You may remember last fall we had a reseeding of the sedge plantings. So all the plug plantings on the end caps have been doing fine. This, those sedge plantings in the middle portion uh, failed. We had a reseeding in the fall. This spring it's not uh, come through again. So uh, we met with our contractor and the design and uh, reevaluated and we had another reseeding of uh, side oat, little blue stem, and some oh. shade uh, grass seed underneath the, the trees uh, there. And that was it's all done. washed away. That was done last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So the storms over the weekend have washed significant portions of that out. So the contractor, uh, I believe Derek had talked to him next, next within the next week, will be out again to redo <laughs> that portion out there. So hopefully at some point in the somewhat near future, you'll see some nice growth there, but it's been a bit of a struggle at this point. Okay. Let's mention that we, we, we knew going in that sedge plantings can be somewhat temperamental, but there's they're just really dramatic and beautiful when you establish them and um, we were excited to, to give it a shot after the second uh, mm -hmm. effort we realized that we maybe we should go for something a little bit more stout and our, our native grasses will, will do quite well in the environment 
they were thinking, the contractor and Ecology Envision, that that parking lot environment is just too hot, all that black top, mm. and the little seedlings are just, just struggling uh, to, to, get, to get established, whereas the native grasses do quite well in, in, in the hotter, drier environments. It'll be... Looks beautiful, the part yeah. that's blooming now. It's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, that sharp, looks Sharp, great. sharp, sharp. Yeah. Um, bank shot system, our King Park uh, court rehab. Uh, we had a delay in the delivery of the bank shot goals. They actually were delivered this morning. Um, mm. McConnell Associates out of St. Louis were here a couple weeks ago, and they did as much as they could without installing any of the poles or backboards. Uh, they will be back in town tomorrow to finish up that portion. And then again next week, well, they'll do the uh, crack repair, sealing, and restriping of the courts there. Um, last thing I'll mention, uh, we talked briefly previously about it is the dog park access control um, we met out with champagne park district it's a joint project for both of our parks uh, dog parks to have uh, security and access control at the gate entries um, met at the danville site um, talked with their representatives there and the installer of that system we should be receiving a quote for what they had used a little amped up for probably the needs that we would one at Champaign in Urbana and uh, the Champaign Park District IT department is uh, receiving three additional proposals and once we have all those grouped together our staff team Champaign staff team will reconvene um, probably in July and, and come up with a final decision and solution for implementation um, we are a little bit ahead we had electrical work done in November there so we're pretty much ready to go to find something and implement in general how does it work it's gonna be either a card or a fob where people will ah. buy they'll have to come in and get it and then it's activated God, and we'll probably be able to activate it what we're looking Jeez. to do is say we can do it currently for the calendar year as we do but then there's also potential to do three month or a punch type uh -huh, system uh -huh. where you have cool. 10 scans or 10 swipes sure. to get mm -hmm. in that would eliminate that daily dollar or a five dollar admission and, mm -hmm. and just have that option for people that are here for a shorter period of time is, is there some notion that these are going to work at both, both sides. champagne and urbana yeah. dog parks yeah that's the goal is to have a, like a cloud-based system where from wherever they're registering it's going to go into that central database and be able to activate at both sites at the same time and we'll be able to take our dogs there and vice versa mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Which is like the current setup, but you know we have the tag system and yep. what we're realizing. We, we have a lot of fence jumpers, so we and uh, really <coughs> we do. Yeah, folks that, that we always have. Yeah, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that really drove our daily approach. We'll hear maybe a daily approach. A lot of people do that, but isn't that a? I mean, you literally fence jumpers. Well, no, it's it's it's, it's, no, it's an it's open, open gate. Um, <coughs> right. so it's oh, well, open gate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> no <laughs> at all. Yeah. You would envision so the dogs, dogs going jumping. Over. Yeah. <laughs> Never so <laughs> Our research, the, the members really love this. Uh, they, they have confidence that if you're in there, you're a member, you know the rules. Right. Additionally, that your dog has uh, received the necessary vac vaccinations. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, other districts have done this, have seen membership go up and, and issues go down. Oh, uh, Danville was thrilled with their system. Their membership uh -huh. went up considerably. Uh, and although they were self-professed sort of tech phobes, they, they really were able to figure out pretty easily. So it's, it's not that complicated. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Good. Ours might be a little bit more complicated since we're doing think, yeah. two, two districts sure. and, and we want to be able to have, you know, some of these additional, uh, functionalities, but it, it'll right. still yeah, be a great so, system. So we'll want it set too, where nobody can get in, you know, before 5 AM or no one can get in after 9 PM where you right, can right. set it by times a year and just oh, say, of course, uh, as the sun goes light. down, sure, yeah, this right. is when mm -hmm. it's just closed period and that kind of stuff. So, it's another so. good feature. Great. Perfect. I just one other project I'll mention on that's not under Andy's direct oversight. It's really through the sanitary district. And I think I reported on the board report last month, but there is a, uh, a sanitary line that goes through Judge Weber Park, uh, and there's a small feeder creek to the saline uh, that has been doing what creeks do, moving and meandering, and it's put that pipe in jeopardy. It's a rather large pipe that delivers uh, sewage from as far north and west as is the Northwest Prospect Avenue. So. Sanders was very concerned about it. Uh, they put some immediate uh, controls in place to protect it. Uh, and later this summer, uh, <coughs> South forbid now, uh, that it will be reinforced. 
and the creek will be re-meandered uh, away from the <laughs> pipe and then strengthened uh, with, with the kind of rock uh, embankments. And a lot of the same structures actually they're going to go in the saline this fall uh -huh. uh, to improve habitat, some, some riffle pool structures in Jay Bain. So uh, it's going to be a great, great project. And uh, we were excited to meet with their design team uh, and learn that there's folks in our local area that are doing stream restoration design work. <coughs> cool. Okay, that moves us on to the executive director's report. Great. Well, first of all, just want to thank all the staff. Everyone's doing a really terrific job. Obviously, this is a very busy time of year for us. All the facilities open, camps, programs. Um, so it's a kind of a huge rush to get everything looking nice. So just really want to appreciate all the staff on the planning and operations and recreation. Obviously, the administrative staff working really hard. So hopefully our Residents appreciate that and they'll have a, a fun summer. Tonight we have some updates on the Wandell Sculpture Garden. Um, we'll see some of the images to make sure the board uh, get, gets a chance to review those. But have a few other updates um, just before we get into that. <clears throat> we had the annual um, SUNA, the South Urbana Neighborhood Association uh, meeting, I think reported on that May 31st. Um, was really terrific. The, I guess the point I want to make there, it's just really great that that many people come out and actually mm -hmm. uh, care about what's going on in Urbana. And so I was able to give just some brief updates because we had the visioning exercise about Lincoln Square, so that took the majority of the time and the focus, but mentioned about our strategic plan and the goals, our kind of our new initiatives, and it appeared, uh, obviously I didn't get a lot of feedback from each person at the audience, but there was a lot of nodding of heads and shaking it seemed like it was reasonable all of the speakers were available after the meeting so anybody could have come up and talked to us i think there was a lot of positive uh, thoughts about the park district so very pleased about that um, <clears throat> just want to mention uh, another quick update on strategic plan i know uh, working with um, trying to get a questionnaire together there's gonna be a couple of activities that I know Sam Smith, who works at Craner, he does a lot of community outreach, is working in the Philo Road area. He's got a couple of events coming up June 30th and August 11th. And so our hope is to work with that group to get at least the questionnaire that we have prepared or Corky and his staff is working on, um, you know, to get some feedback basically on the needs of, of some of the residents in that neighborhood. Um, so I think ho our hope is it'll really be a good time, have some fun, meet some new people, and get some information that will relate back to our strategic plan. I want to report next week, we have a meeting next Thursday um, with Senator Bennett and Representative Amons. We'll be meeting at the Lake House and sharing our plans for Crystal Lake Park, talking about strategies on grants, any other ideas or con uh, concerns or concepts that they might have, in addition to any other topics that would come up. So really pleased, obviously we didn't get a, good chance at the legislative conference to meet with them due to their schedule so we're pleased that they're making time for us uh, back home and and we'll see them then uh, just want to report the uncorked event at Meadowbrook that's a collaboration with the Urbana Business Association and the UPD was very successful it was June 9th Saturday at Meadowbrook about 1100 folks showed up for that event so terrific show for that mm -hmm. obviously it's a fun and growing opportunity there so it seems to be going well didn't hear any uh, negative comments I continue to mention the Urbana Realtor tour the third tour is coming up Corky's going to provide this one it's in the Southridge neighborhood I saw talked with Carl Hill last night <clears throat> at an event and uh, he's real excited they're going to be sharing two model homes they'll have some food and activities and a little bit of entertainment out there so we're pleased they're doing that Again, I think the intent is to get an up-close personal, provide more information. The last tour at Stone Creek was very well attended. We hope that this one is well attended also. Um, it's a really good opportunity to share what Urbana uh, has to offer. I think Derek and I both covered the OSLAD. I think we were a little confused by that. The signals we were hearing from IAPD and others, the grant was ready, it was out there. We checked with our grant administrators, The they have not been given numbers yet, so they don't really know what the amounts are. And then they have to revise the manual. So we don't know if that's a big deal, a little deal, how much has changed. Um, so once we know, um, we'll get started with that. Obviously we need a resolution for that. So our staff concern is our meeting schedules over mm -hmm. the summer. 
Um, we just don't know that dates we were at least told or tracking July 1st is when the budget kicked in. And I think we saw an early note on an IPD posting of July 16th, 15th or 16th. I thought it was the 16th. Um, but apparently no date has been set and we're still waiting. Um, there has been money budgeted for it, so it's likely there will be around. July is usually when they're due, so we're, well, we're just we're not sure why they're not ready. It makes us anxious. Obviously, we, we want to know. We hope it's a large number of amount available that increases our chances. But I guess once we know, we'll let everybody else know. Um, let's see. And also, uh, the University Avenue project improvement projects mm -hmm. moving forward met with the appraisers. They appraised our section of park at Leal Park. That's going to be going in front basically we'll lose some of that as part of the permanent basically they'll be widening the sidewalks so the my understanding the roads don't really change but the edges and the walkways are the additional reason they need some additional land these sets from the appraisers um, the I, I think the topic in point so we want to have a good staff discussion about that and I think we want to look at the number that's being offered it's both for the permanent easement and the temporary easement Something I continue to try to communicate to the group um, at IDOT is, you know, we do view parks a little bit differently. They're forever spaces that always should stay open. <clears throat> so the loss of parkland is to me and to our team is very different than a business maybe that's located on university that might lose something. Those businesses could sell, change their prices, charge the next person more, you know, make all kinds of internal controls. We're really basically the protectors of the public land. So I think um, the challenge with that is there are so few park assessments that they don't have large databases. Uh -huh. So what price do you use? So they tend to gravitate to a commercial, the highest commercial use, the idea if you're a functioning business successful, you would get the highest consideration. I, I still believe we need to challenge some of that thinking just to make sure we're getting fair compensation. Um, I think it, in the end it'll be difficult to prove it either way, but I think our goal would be to negotiate the best settlement that we could receive there. I think there's also a few concerns. At least one of the tree looks very close. In my quick review, that I don't believe they included that in any sort of an appraisal assessment, would there be a loss or a detriment. Again, our concern is you often don't see direct impacts when you cut into tree roots. It can be a delayed reaction several years down the road. Obviously, the project's done. Everyone's gone and off the site, and then you're left with a you know, potentially dying tree. So we definitely want to be made whole with that. I, I can predict it'll be a challenging process just because we can't necessarily access a huge database, at least that I know of. We'll definitely give it some consideration, and they can't either. They said that most closest akin to parks are churches because they're sort of that similar mm -hmm. situation where you know, they tend to be longer term. They don't often sell you know, and change hands multiple times, or at least on a rapid basis. So uh, <coughs> nonetheless, we'll keep working. They have the condemnation power. So obviously, if we were uncooperative, you know, cooperative, there's certainly another way to do it. There's a court process we could probably entertain. Certainly, have to consider your legal fees and all of that. So I think we're hoping to come to a yes that seems fair and reasonable to everybody. So that's that's the goal. There are some dates and deadlines, so um, we'll need to track that and pay attention. Uh, but once we get that information si finalized out, obviously we'll bring that proposal back to the board. Uh, but it is ongoing. Last thing I wanted to talk a little about and have staff add some comments to is some of the work we're doing at um, Meadowbrook Park at the Wandell Sculpture Garden. Mm -hmm. Just a little background, as you know, we've mentioned before, Cliff um, Bergeron was a long-term resident at Clark Lindsay. He loved Meadowbrook Park. He was often in the park taking photos. In fact, at Clark Lindsay, he had a kind of a wall of information. It was called Cliff's Corners, and he had all the postings of animals and mm -hmm. what's going on in the park, and oh, the residents cool. just loved it. It was really a nice thing. And when he passed, he provided a, a, a state gift for us for the park district. And there were no prerequisites as far as what it could be spent on. Usually we, you know, find a project and something that's really near and dear. But when we really analyzed what do we need, we needed some information. We have some design um, improvement challenges there, things that are going to really make the park nice and that, that part of the sculpture garden. So we used a, a portion of, of those dollars to work with ratio architects to come up with some images. We're also working with 
uh, the Wandell family, they've had a long presence at the garden, and so information like that we could use to help attract them you know, to the, another phase. Right now where we are is we're trying to work with Wandell family on the entry garden. As you come over the bridge into the um, sculpture garden proper, we've always had sort of a vision of you know, a place for people to arrive, a place to kind of give a, a you know, instead of a, well, I turn right or left, but maybe a sort of a lingering space that creates a you know, nice atmosphere. Certainly if you have an educational group out there, or you're teaching or want to have an you know, impromptu meeting group, you can sit in the council ring. Um, I think you're all familiar with council rings derived from Jens Jensen's work, an early landscape ar architect in Illinois. Kind of a signature element that he was real fond of, has a real strong prairie landscape basis. So I know when I first started working at Meadowbrook, I thought we need, we need a council ring or something that really gets at that prairie landscape design. So staff's put together some um, nice ideas that Ratio was able to translate into some drawings. And the plan is to get a proposal back for the Wandells um, for them to approve and make that project official. The other part we want to talk about is the, the sculpture collection. We have in our interpretive plan an area that's sort of proposed for the sculpture. Um, so we can explain that and also more importantly recognize people that have donated. Right now we've sort of got wooden mm. boards out there and you know they're not the most attractive and again those were to be temporary along with our sculpture recognition signs that tell the name and the artist the materials and the date we're using the four by four post again presumed to be a you know something we could use that's relatively low cost so we have some new standards in mind there also some signage improvements and some gateway elements so we wanted to share that with you obviously we're moving first on the uh, entry garden with the Wandells, but as we have resource and can move on the others or determine there's another donor that would be interested, certainly it would be a package ready that we could talk with them about. So we thought we'd have staff kind of share that, go through that, and we can certainly all add comments, answer any questions you have about it. Again, we've been working about a year and a half, some of these ideas, but want to make sure you're all aware of that. Uh, so these were some uh, precedents that were from our discussions with Ratio and ideas that uh, they could provide images from different sites around the area. Um, you can see a lot of the core tin material that we had liked uh, and hoped to incorporate in the design here, showing some uh, entry signage and then some sculptural signage and interpretation uh, op opportunities. So what's the um, shelf life of some, of some of these visuals? I know we just replaced the bird sanctuary outlook, which looks great, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, what's sort of the expected lifespan of that? Of things like this? Well, just because it's out in the sun and elements. Okay. So. Well, these materials, I'm sure ops will have comments too, are, are very outdoor. And Mostly other. I'm interested in the, like the graphic images. Oh, the graphic panels. It yeah. depend, depends on the material. We were talking about that just today, actually. Um, mostly what we're using right now is HPL, it's high pressure laminate that's got color embedded in it. It holds up well to um, vandalism. I mean, you can scar it if you really try to, but it does fade over time <coughs> in direct sunlight. I think it's warranted for like 10 years. Um, what we've found is that there's other products out there uh, like uh, some of the um, laminate uh, vinyl on a steel backing or aluminum backing that uh, is more fade resistant uh, and a lot less expensive, and so you could replace it if you needed to. And so we're, we're considering moving in that direction, uh, but right now HPL is sort of the gold, gold standard gotcha. for interpretation. I think in general, we, we talk about this a lot too, most of your outdoor elements, almost of anything, you know, of, you know material right. made, manufactured type stuff, whether it's playgrounds or pool slides or, you know, interpretive. They're gonna fade. They, they do <laughs> fade, you know, obviously you're encouraged that they'll last longer, but it does seem to, you know, fade, but we're always looking for better materials and ways to pr preserve that. What is the thing in the lower left corner? I'm just it's like a yeah, signage, right? It. Like it, it would be Wandell like like sculpture card. So it looks like trouble. okay. So, so obviously, you know, like the core ten material is one that we're interested in using okay. more of. It's it's very uh, low maintenance. It's got a natural rest patina that okay. doesn't, you know, I mean, kind of protects the, the metal. Uh, we find that it's less likely to get climbed on or damaged, and so uh, we've had some discuss with the, the gateway at UC Woods. We'll soon have one at Meadowbrook Park in the gateway there, and then um, we're interested in incorporating it into the so Elsberry. They are or they are not climbing on the UC Woods? They're not. Okay. They're not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you said they were. They get rusty hands. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. So what, 
Go ahead, Roger. What kind of impact does vandalism have on these on these interpretive uh, signs and, and whatever? Sure. Right. Well, I notice there's usually some carving on some of the directional signs out at Meadowbrook. Yeah, yeah. So, so th those HPL signs, they, they can, whatever, be carved. Uh, and once that's happened, it, 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 your option is to replace it at some yeah. point, which is why we're considering going with a, a less expensive material okay. that's more uh, fade resistant. Um, the Core 10, we haven't had many issues with, with vandalism. It, you can scrape it, um, but then you can also kind of uh, rub it and get some of that natural respitina back to obscure okay. some of it. Um, it we, it's a challenge everywhere, and so we're, we're constantly yeah. trying to exactly. rethink better materials, better methods. Every site we go to, we always look at their signs, and you would usually see, you know, often see some sign of you know vandalism. I think Park in Springfield, it's a brand new site, three years old, and beautiful interpretive plan around the park and it's already marred up. That's so I think Selden. Derek's point of maybe you go with products that you, you're gonna mm -hmm. replace. Regenerate. Yeah, and it's that better to sense. replace them yeah. and maybe have a lower cost and just try to do it more frequent. Is that at Southwind? Is that the at park? Southwind Park, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We are just there recently, so. Did you notice the mowing? <laughs> or I, lack thereof? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> interesting. Right. I oh. thought our guys wouldn't let the park look. And I don't think the weather had been much different there right. than here, but it, the the, you know, where, where, I don't know what you call the buffers between the parking lots. I mean, Planting. Yeah, the plant, well, the grass. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. A little yeah. tall. Um, just a comment about the core 10 steel, a, a good example. Obviously, if we were doing, putting in bridges like we have at Meadowbrook, we definitely would have went with the core 10. When that product first came out commercially, a lot of park districts, oh, that's kind of an unfinished look. And so we went with the painted structures. Now we're paying to paint the bridges. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if we would have went with a material like this, there would not be painting required. You know, you might have some maintenance, but certainly not on a painting is a forever cycle. So um, that's one of the beauties of this product. It sort of kind of self-preserves. This is uh, the entry sign concept. Oh, I like that. I like the most. It was. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sculptural. It's it's more of a signature entry for a signature park. Um, it has that? It's cut out here, in Meadowbrook Park, and the oh, it's a cut out. Oh, nice. Laser cut. Yeah. And where would this be located? Yeah, the the, the, the yeah. prime entrances, so Race and Windsor. So okay. Oh, so, so you'd have more than one of these up. Mm -hmm. Great. I think the idea is, you know, when we look at our signature parks, so we have Crystal Lake, for example. We've got the old historic pillars that sort of mark mm -hmm. the entryways, mm -hmm. and the gateways. Mm -hmm. Some either gateways, and so they signal significance and importance yeah, and yeah. draw people's attention. So I think we're trying to suggest can we find interesting, affordable ways mm -hmm. to gateway our signature parks yeah, in the yeah. future. You know, maybe it's different than a neighborhood park or a community park, but, you know, we've got a high visibility standard there along Windsor, so certainly would seem to stand out and draw attention. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then we get to the sculptural mm. identification. Uh -huh. It's similar, it's the same material, the core 10. Um, we would likely not have it on a concrete base. It would probably be a direct uh, bury in the ground there so there wouldn't be a, a block sitting there. And then an infographic, probably the HPL panel um, on the, affixed on that top portion. And then again, reflecting that cutout, uh, the water jet cut prairie grass, which would be the same, you know, similar style of the uh, gateway entry. And do any of the signs have like solar capability? I'm just asking since. Oh. They, you know, they could. I think what you probably tend to see them on are other types of standards or lighting, I think would be a more standard. Probably just the height and the little bit of space there. Mm. And, um, you know, I'm virtually any. supposed to be in the park in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Lit up to encourage Did you people. mean lighted or just could they be solar also? To <clears throat> just or energy. solar just on the light. So, you know, just passing by and sure. it just. It would look pretty, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Going into the park right. after yeah. hours. <laughs> well, I guess maybe along alongside that question, I think at one point we you had mentioned there was a work to map the art in the park. And so. I was out there the other day and thinking, oh, that would be, you know, if there were QR codes, this is a use of QR codes. And maybe we've talked about this recently. Um, just sort of how does that all fit in together? I mean, with what you're presenting tonight. Mm -hmm. I think we looked at a couple of options, you know, 
Certainly you could post up signs, you know, that have layout, make it seasonal, done less expensive. Certainly there's digital options. People could do it on their phone, so getting a program put together where there's, even if it's just, you know, the basic collection that you could update when mm -hmm. new pieces come or, when you know, every few years. I think that's something we need to have because that would be helpful to the users. We rarely print, you know, some of our guides or anything. Mm -hmm. Occasionally we'll get some requests or a group was coming through town and asked for some. Um, we do that, but definitely we need, need to have something. I always use the map <coughs> when I'm at Allerton. That's mm -hmm. on, that it's on my phone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's still just, I think, a PDF, but I can zoom in and out and see where the trail maps are and things like that. And so I would think that there'd be a lot of use for this. And if you need mm -hmm. some CS students to help design it, I'm happy to <laughs> help, <laughs> help broker that. Uh, uh, right. I don't know. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> They'll do, but you know. Same platform that <coughs> Zoe's working on for utilities uh -huh. that we've looked to use for the for sculpture the, in the uh, Hickman Tree Walk in, in Carl Park. Um, I haven't seen the interface yet, so I, that, that's, you know, it may be very functional for a staff member to go find utility lines, but less interesting for a yeah. visitor. So we want to look at it first to make sure it's a good fit. And, if it's not, we'll, we'll talk about CS yeah. students. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of the QR codes, our, our approach uh, so far has been where we incorporate them to um, have them um, sort of as a standalone element. Um, that way, if the QR technology becomes you know, some other technology, mm -hmm. we can pull it and add it. Um, right now, it seems like it's sticking around, but we're going to want to watch that closely. We have it at the uh, gateway in, in BC Woods, and we'll have one at and the Newport Gateway. Th I'll have to remember. There's some, um, I guess now they call themselves the iSchool course on sort of like museum. Like they, this is part of the master's projects of several folks. That are similar type of like this is more of a museum acquisition and mapping and interactive, <coughs> um, you know, sites, etc. So I mean, there's that's also it could be interesting to engage that. Um, maybe you're already doing that as well, but I think they, a colleague of mine had a, her project was in Italy and she wanted to design an interactive um, activity with like uh, one of the historic sites there. So, <laughs> so she, des she, des she designed a map and a variety of different things. So we'll be in touch. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Especially if we can go to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're just displaying uh, information signs, um, opportunity for interpretation, maps, um, again, similar styling. And then we're getting into... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we actually had fun with this. Yes. Right. <laughs> so this well, yeah. Yeah. As long as it's not a headstone, that's that. fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All of us. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> these, these bench stones, you know, obviously, as you can see, are giving the opportunity to recognize donors. Uh, we're envisioning that similar uh, buff limestone that we're seeing more and more in mm -hmm. uh, Crystal Lake Park right now, at the pool and the nature play. We, I mean, we, we sort of challenged Rachel to come up with a concept that we could add to over time. So if a mm -hmm. donor came on, you could add to. And so um, they've had some experience with this. We need to find a local. It would be a monument company that could come in and, and, and uh, do work very much like you see in a, in a cemetery where you might have, you know, one person mm -hmm. and then sure. uh, finish yeah. date elsewhere. Yeah. This would be an opportunity to, to recognize donors progressively over time. Mm -hmm. um, that was important to Jeff Wandell as well for um, the council ring. He would like to have some initial recognition of current family members that are involved in the project, mm -hmm. but we all to recognize future family yeah. members yeah. As, as the planting grows, matures. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. As Tim was uh, mentioning, this is um, our concept for that entry into the sculpture garden and the, the council ring coming off of the bridge. Um, and you'll see the circular um, nature with the limestone. And then this portion here is actually going to be removed. There, it'll be a complete uh, flush, uh, custom cut stone kind of look and feel to it as well. I'm sorry, I'm having mm -hmm. troubles visualizing where this is. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can too. you help? Going over the bridge from Nature Play. From Prairie, Prairie Play. From, from the Windsor uh, Road lot. So you cross the a creek. A big bridge. The bridge oh. is, uh, yeah, right here. The bridge that parallels the uh, And Windsor Prairie Road. Play's over here, and then you walk over the bridge. Okay. Here's the existing path. It's always set up for the jazz walk that 
-hmm. The table? Yeah. 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 Okay. Road is just a right. Side. And you have the spray painted yes. on the sidewalk. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I was thinking this was going to be in the Wandell Sculpture Garden. So I was on it an... It actually uh, is. I mean, it, as you come over the bridge, you're right in the garden. And okay. so the idea is instead of just turning right or left, there'll now be a neat little entry seating area that mm. will draw people in. So again, if you're on your bike and you just want to go for a ride, you'll make your turn. But if you want to linger or enjoy the plants or eventually shade in the area, mm -hmm. you'd be able to have, have a seating area. But if we're doing nature it's, tours or it's not near the current Wandel Sculpture Garden. No, it's in it is. It's, it's in, in, in the one. So like, if you is just this, want a little this bit. Is, in this is flopped over, I think, from the way I view the world. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, which way is east and which way is west on north here? Is north up. is up. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Sons is just out of the view north of this. So if we had a little wider lens, you'd see fathers and sons right at that, that corner. So it's the okay. northeast corner of the Wandell Sculpture Garden. So you're on okay. the short loop, standing at Windsor Road looking. Fathers and Sons is here. Yikes is in the middle. And the Prairie Lantern is down to your left by Clark Lindsay. Could you maybe you could <laughs> I just think of it as the piece of Ray Street, so clearly that I'd have I don't have that follows for that location map. So oh, sorry. Oh yeah. well, 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 thank you. <laughs> He's gonna give you At a least you're not alone. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was just talking company. to Dave Obviously about how... Obviously, we work at these sites all the right. time. Right. <laughs> You're actually people. challenged, I am. I walk there every morning, so... Thank you, Andy. There I live go. over there. there I still don't care. So this is... That's the short loop, yep. and that loop is the Wandell Sculpture Garden loop. Yeah, so that that, oh, where okay. he's got the arrow is where the... Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. And that straight line... That's and it is where I thought it was, but it just to me, I it's think of the... Um, oh... I think just I'm thinking of the tree grove, so okay. never mind. <laughs> That's why I'm confused. <laughs> Often when we say Wandell Sculpture Garden, for staff, it would be the what we call the short loop. That, mm -hmm. that kind of huh. that boot huh. shape. Yes, boot sorry, shape. I'm thinking of the Timponi tree grove. That's why I'm the, confused. The collection. Oh. <laughs> so I'm just directionally <laughs> jumped. Right, exactly. I'm sorry. So how, yes, how, yeah, I think of it how is. long is that, is that walk that then neck. to the... I mean, it's to be determined. We, we yeah. want to get into the uh, yeah. de design in the next <clears throat> rendering. You actually see a more compressed version of it. We we asked this to be extended because we wanted it to be more off the path and be more of a intimate, secluded experience you know, away from the main traffic. Um, so we we don't ac actually have a finite dimension at this point. So you're going to be removing some prairie mm -hmm. to to do this in terms of putting trees in and that sort of thing. Okay. But it is yeah. pretty loud, or not. From Windsor. Ooh, that's a good point. You hear Windsor. A, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I mean, essentially, even if you're in the far corner, let's say by the, I don't know where your wayfinding is, but further <laughs> deep south, Clearly. you, know, you can still hear. <laughs> it's just very polite. <laughs> um, but I think hopefully the uh, ambiance, you know, and new landscape will kind of give you a little buffer in, in shading. The trees will. Something yeah. I think we want to point out too. Andy's probably doing. I'll let you go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, what do you want to point out? Uh, accessible seating. I think oh, we've made oh. a revision there. The two white boxes there. Oh. I think we thought, while well, we want spaces for accessible seating, somebody in a wheelchair, anybody with a disability, we decided to put them on both sides of the curve. Mm. Uh -huh, okay. uh -huh. One side and one, just to balance it a little bit so it doesn't look. So it's just a simple space without a stone. Correct. Right. Okay. So somebody can park there. Are you two on each side or one on each side? One. I think one. Yeah. And so, you know, we're. These are still draft designs, but I think we're zeroing in on, on the final. Um, and this is also related to or different from the foundations. This is the foundations. Yes, that's <laughs> good memory tracking, because remember where we started early on, there was an interest and still is an interest at the Nature Center out front. In fact, we worked with Ratio, borrowed that same design idea. It just, I think when we started going down the, that path, this is easy. There wasn't money in the budget, you know, at the foundation level. They do hope to see something like that, and it's a good way to recognize people, you know, in an attractive way. So we decided, well, let's borrow that. We, I think we envision a need for both sites, at Nature Center and this site. In fact, three sites, an additional opportunity by the barn um, as we work with that site. But again, this would be sort of that pull you off the path, get your bikes out of the way. You're not sitting real close to the path, but you're a little bit out, a little bit further not too far, mm -hmm. you don't need a large extension. 
but really created that atmosphere, mm -hmm. you know, for meeting, greeting, just the views are fantastic, right? Right at that spot. People will want to have their weddings there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They can if it doesn't there. involve cars, parking, or a crowd. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah. yeah, so this is the southwest entry of the sculpture garden. So this would be if you're entering <laughs> from the Race Street uh, parking okay. lot. Okay, I know what that is. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah thank lot. you. Right. Uh, so it's it's kind of, you know, mirroring a little bit on the uh, catty corner. It's kind of like a half, you know, half circle. Mm -hmm. It's similar design to the council ring here which would have the informational sign, and then we have the space for the uh, accessible seating as well. And then opportunities uh, for the limestone blocks to recognize um, donors. We have the one sign where the, the other council ring is proposed that recognizes people have donated towards the sculpture garden program. That would get replaced by <coughs> this, mm -hmm. or we could recognize them on stone block. Mm -hmm. And we'd also have an interpretive element that would talk about the, 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 the sculpture garden program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these are really helpful. <laughs> As you can see, even just a small pull-in creates yeah. a nice atmosphere to sit and enjoy the area. And there currently are sculptures just to the, bottom, yeah, to the, right, to the right. right. Yeah, maybe have to you know move some F pieces right. go, but we should be able to work it out. You see that four sculptures in this position. Right. It is. It's Kathy. Yes. Things <laughs> will probably. Oh, I see. She's just right to the far right. Look a little closer. You know, like. The interpretive should be on a certain side. Where's the, so we're looking right. at the bigger yeah. picture. But yeah. We're <laughs> to, I, I noticed the river birch are still there. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Just so happened those, to notice uh, that. Obviously, the, okay, the, we'll you. transition over time with okay. that. But because they're there now, we just thought it's likely yep. when this is probably built, it'll still look more like that. Okay. Um, but obviously, the, the goal would be to have trees and shading and appropriate plantings. Something that isn't there, it looks like the service berry that sort of mixed in the white uh, flowering tree that you see in that image. So there are some opportunities to add smaller native trees and things like that in the area. Again, our goal isn't to block the views, but sort of enhance that, mm -hmm. give you a sense of enclosure. And that's uh, nice since we just cut down on those trees for the Hickman Wildflower Walk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, they needed to go, but. Yes. It'll make, it'll make people happy. happy right. right. And again, the added benefit of this is we're also promoting our interpretive plan yeah. you know, for the park because we yeah. still, believe it or not, have a lot of visitors first time that while we understand why there's the things there, they don't. And this is a great way to tell them about it. Clearly, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I do walk this, but I realize I don't walk the short loop. So gotcha. because we don't want to walk around right. on Windsor. So. Uh -huh. That's it. That's the final image we have. Okay. So that gives you a little I background. Of it, kind of the, yeah, areas, this, yeah, the, this. the products definitely helped Jeff Wandell, you know, understand what was there and, and you know, visualize it a little <laughs> better. So <laughs> we thought it was a good investment. And again, hope to move on this one first um, and then start our plan of approach for the other elements. So, you know, there could be options. If we only have a little dollar left, we might look at the sculpture standards, you know, if that's all you can afford. You know, can we do something with that remainder gift of his? If we could couple it with another gift or some other dollars, you know, we could do more and just begin to work on these as priorities. Lastly, they could end up in a capital budget, but uh, we, we think because Meadowbrook's a very attractive park, the likelihood of finding donors, you know, might be pretty high. So that, that's sort of our, so we'll use these tools to attract donors when we meet with people. Wasn't there a gift given not long ago for an entryway by, I believe it was the Wits, mm -hmm. right? Yes, that's sort of a, it, not so much an entryway, but it's a, one of the interpretive markers okay. at, at a gateway okay. sort of element. Right. We, I use the word gateway, kind of a signal that you're here and you're transitioning or moving into another space. Okay. So um, both what Andy shot, just yeah. showed here and the Wit gift are, um, came out of our interpretive plan that we worked on okay. some time ago. Yeah. Andy's gonna pull up an image of what that gateway looks like. We're trying to make these linkages with you all because we know sometimes our planning, you know, we did the interpretive stuff a number of years ago, and now we're still mm -hmm. pulling those ideas forward with donors we find. And the goal is to get things to hang together, you know, graphically on the site so they look nice and it's comprehensive, not a mix of things. Right. So this will probably orientate a little bit better. This is that Race Street parking lot uh, and then entry onto the path here with all the gardens. Mm -hmm. 
the uh, this is core ten again. Um, it's huge, right? Am I getting the scale? It's huge, mm -hmm. big. It's like it's, it's like the Busey. Yeah. It's cultural, and it's like the Busey It'll, Woods Gateway. This, this will be a new. Uh, it's Taylor Studios again. Yeah. Here and then, uh, so you see that this portion with the butterfly and the flower is going to be angled so that when you're coming in, you can kind of see it. The Meadowbrook Park sign on that wing is actually. Um, you can see through it, it, or it allows light through, I guess. Huh. Um, and then the actual sign itself, that'll have some interpretation telling a story of how Meadowbrook Park started out as prairie, it then transitioned to a farm, and then now with the park district, it's back to a prairie again. That is kind of a nice circle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I like it's it. really exciting. Was that a praying mantis on the yeah. RSM yeah. there? Yes. <laughs> the rattlesnake master. Oh, the rattlesnake yeah. there, yeah. Again, I think okay, hope you can see <laughs> our sites coming together, what we're doing at Crystal Lake. We're starting to create a vocabulary of materials um, that we think will be long lasting, durable, and really, you know, handle it nicely. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing here? <laughs> That's all I think we had. Anything else to cover? Great. Thank you all for your attention. Um, Brings us to the president's report, and I don't have no, anything <laughs> in particular to report on other than the upcoming meetings. Uh, at this point, there's not a July 3rd uh, study session envisioned, and the regular board meeting will be on the 10th, which will involve dealing with the budget. So, um, moving on to liaison reports, um, the finance study group did meet last Friday. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I took the privilege of inviting Roger to come to that since <coughs> Bob was a participant in that in that study group frequently and he has now left. Um, I did, so it was nice to have more than just me there <laughs> from the board. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, there were a number of things discussed uh, at, at that time. I mean, I, I think quite a bit on the, the uh, extensive work that staff has been doing trying to deal with the health care insurance situation in the district and there's some movement there that's pretty exciting and, but not finalized and it's uh, very very hopeful that uh, that situation can be improved even yet this fiscal year right? so oh that would be wonderful yeah. yes it would so um we on to policy study group. Is there anything to report there? We have not met, no. And the Urbana Parks Foundation. No, meeting was canceled yesterday. Oh, okay. And the UPDEC planning and study group, I assume, has not met, is that? That's correct. Okay. I did want to mention we probably do want to get together. I think we're um, scheduled out up, to, and so we should probably meet not immediately, but sometime over the next month or so, mm -hmm. just, you know, based on your schedules and get our latter fall schedule ready. Okay, that uh, moves us then into old business. And uh, the first item is to receive the draft ordinance for the 2018-06, uh, adopting the combined budget and appropriation ordinance. What did I do? There it is. Back. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I don't. I, I don't particularly have anything to actually speak about about the draft budget and appropriation ordinance. You're receiving it tonight. Um, it, this is a part of the legal process we have to go to go through. That the law says it has to be posted uh, for 30 days at our administrative office, which it is. Um, it was posted last week once it was prepared and the notice has already been um, sent to the newspaper it it's required to appear a certain number of days before the meeting so it's scheduled to appear on i think the 28th or 29th in the um, public notices section of the newspaper so th these are all the steps that we have to go through for the ordinance um, but i so if you have any questions about the ordinance that's fine but I don't expect it to change between the draft version and the final version that the board will um, vote on 
in July to approve. Um, it did change quite a bit, some, from the preliminary version that was presented to you in April, though, that you were given. And some of those highlights we're going to talk about tonight. Um, Derek and Corky and I prepared just a fairly brief presentation to bring the board up to speed on uh, the major highlights of the highlights of major changes since last fiscal year. So um, I'll talk a little bit about about that. Just to remind um, the, the public about our budget cycle, uh, typically it's a number of steps that goes year round. Uh, the most of our budget cycle begins in October and November as Corky directs his staff and the p &O staff supervisors begin preparing their budgets at the program level. And they use a number of inputs to, uh, which could be pre prior year data, but also a number of other sources of data to prepare their preliminary budget requests that get forwarded to Corky and Derek for approval. Um, once those numbers are finalized, they, get, they come to my office, which is usually in about February. Oh, I made a new graph. Oh, Meredith. Hi. So um, November, December, the staff develop their program budgets. January is when the department heads approve those budgets. The budgets come over to my office in February and Sandy enters them in. And that's really when I begin my work on the budget is in February. And my, my work on the budget continues really consistently through March and into April as I prepare the preliminary budget for uh, the board that they receive in April. The kind of final figures for the budget are received in March and April as well when we get the tax extension from the county and then also the board uh, approves our final salary recommendations. So those kinds of final figures are then built into the budget. And um, at that point, then you can see what we're doing now is the notice of the public hearing in June, which will then be approved in July. And then we're required to file the budget with the county clerk in um, by the end of July. But even though that's kind of the budget cycle, this whole graph is really only showing the first three steps of this budget cycle, which is to plan, prepare, and implement the budget. So the implementation is the approval of the ordinance. Uh, but after that, really, there's still a year-round process of monitoring the budget that we do every single month um, as a staff, but also you do as a board when you review the financial reports. And then um, in April, we revise the budget. So, and the revision kind of is happening simultaneously while the new budget is coming to you. So it's kind of just a continuous uh, spiral. Uh, this is the major fund uh, district-wide level of revenues. You can see, if you can see, is that too small for you? Uh, we had a 6.1% in, in increase in revenues over the prior year for this coming year. And our property taxes are comprising 61% of our total revenues, which is a pretty typical number. Some, usually it's between 60 and 70%. And you kind of get a feel on that graph for what portion of our revenues are coming from where. And this is just a chart showing the increases specifically in our property taxes. So the increase in the CPI was 2.1%. And that's what our increase is based on for, um, from, for year to year as far as the PTEL calculation, the property tax limitation law. And any increase beyond that 2.1% is growth in EAV that's coming on as new property. And you can see that bottom number, it, we actually received a 3.5% increase year to, year to year in property tax revenues. So we did have an increase in EAV this year, so, which allowed for that. And then this is the similar chart showing the expense side of the equation. So this is kind of a good graph just depicting what portions make up the most of our expenses. So salaries is obviously the biggest chunk of our budget, uh, both full-time and part-time, followed by contractual services, capital expenditures, and debt payments. Um, so that's kind of what the big picture looks like. And these charts also appear in the budget book, which you'll receive in July. So you'll see those again there. So our grants just really slow right now. I mean, we're not, yeah. Yeah. Well, at least the large, what I call the larger development type grants. Mm-hmm. Or land acquisition mm -hmm. type things. Yeah, we, we've seen a freeze in grants. I mean, since, I, I would say since the, you know the Ooh. bubble burst really in 2008 it's been grants have been harder and harder to come by but. Yeah, that was a long time ago 
I think there hasn't even been regular cycles for Oslad. I think in the last four years it was one cycle. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. everyone that rushed to get on that are still waiting for their funds. So, <laughs> or many of them are. And Os Oslad is the state. Allocated. Correct. Right. So we and we rarely get a grant that is not a state right. grant. Uh, a difference would be the ITAP, the Illinois Transportation right. Enhancement Program, which mm -hmm. is federal funds passing through our state, state IDOT, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's 80-20. Right. I think the earlier pie chart you showed where showing where our uh, revenue sources are coming from, the donor contributions are do you want to see that again? Well, I mean, I just think it's fairly significant. And, yeah. and so visually, I don't know what percentage. Well, and keep in mind, up, 17%. a portion of that is the contributions for the partner shares for the Indoor Aquatic Center, too, which are quite large this year because of the air handling unit. So um, that's a, a lot larger than usual. So that's I, part because it's donations and miscellaneous? Yeah, it's okay. considered miscellaneous is what it's considered, those <coughs> partner shares, yeah. And so both our portion and the school district's portion is in that number. And that includes both the regular operating share, which is around $216,000 per entity, and then also the pool pack, which is 723000 So it's quite large. So, I mean... I would say that if you could pull out miscellaneous, mm -hmm. yep. this mm -hmm. would be a good, good mm -hmm. um, piece of a, a nice tool for the foundation. Yes. This I agree. Yeah. Yep. Slide mm -hmm. right here, just to sort of show them, and also to present like this is where the revenue sources come from. Sure. So you can sort of see that. We could I mean, we're almost to really just pull monies? UIC I mean, out, maybe of 61 the equation. Sixty-one percent. I mean. That's like the University of Illinois, <laughs> you know, like that, that's people might expect that it's a hundred percent, right? right. Mm -hmm. Of course, or seventy-five or something like that. So I think that this is this tells a good story. Yeah, I think that is a often misconception of folks assume. Oh, I'm sorry. I had one more comment about this. So our um, increases in expenditures over the prior year are projected to be about nine point three percent of an increase over last year. But we know what a lot of that is. Um, and it's due in large, in large part to one-time large expenditures that we have planned for this year. And many of which we're gonna talk about during the highlights here. So one of the major expenditures that we're planning for this year is coming out of the general fund and it's our accounting software uh, implementation for the new software that we're hoping that the board is supportive of. Uh, tonight, so you'll we'll be talking about that in a little bit. But the funding for that project is coming from these three sources on the board, um, and we actually extended an offer to the part-time accounting as assistant, um, and who is hopefully going to start on June 25th. We're really excited. Um, his name's Mick, and he's from the University of Illinois. And he just graduated with a double bachelor's in accounting and finance, and he's doing the one-year master's program at the cool. U of I. So he's going to stay around all year, and he's just a very go-getter he's he's really great so i look forward to bringing him on and um, we worked with the city on the hardware equipment purchase um, expectations and they thought the twenty thousand we have budgeted should be sufficient for purchasing a, purchasing a server um, and whatever backup type uh, needs that we have as far as hardware and then the accounting software implementation itself it, it should be easily fit into the hundred sixty five thousand dollar budget that we have set aside but um, there will be some change orders that we expect as part of the implementation, which I can talk about when we get to that part of the program. Um, do you want to talk about public Wi-Fi, Derek? Sure, yeah. Uh, about two weeks ago, we had a, a very big rollout of Wi-Fi. It's been, we've been working on it for a, a long time. Uh, but what happened two weeks ago was we had I3, who is the modern incarnation of UC2B, um, increase uh, our bandwidth. Uh, put in new hardware at all of our facilities that then allowed MCS, who's our new um, public side uh, consultant uh, IT tech group, to um, put in their hardware. And now we have a better ability to parcel out uh, Wi-Fi between a public network and, and that which is going to be on the city network. Um, and that's why we needed more Wi-Fi. Was we want to have a dedicated amount for, for public use. Um, so they're still making some tweaks. Uh, they're going to um, improve the login process uh, at the in Aptor Aquatic Center. They need to take a closer look at kind of user expectations. We had a, a big slam of users there and make sure it works the way it needs to. Um, but we actually have modern Wi-Fi in place at this point. The actual budget increase is, is mostly going to be ongoing operational costs because with more
more bandwidth comes more cost. And so, that, so that's what was the, the budget uh -huh. number this year. It wasn't too huge of an increase. I didn't put a chart about it because it wasn't anywhere near accounting software implementation. I just wanted to give Derek an opportunity to talk about changes. And, and Corky, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about kind of the impacts that'll have for your public rentals and things like that too. Especially at uh, the Lake House, Phillips, and the Nature Center, at, at those three facilities, we get a lot of groups that are wanting to have meetings and show PowerPoints and, and be able to have access to the internet. So I, I think this will really help our, our rentals for for those facilities. Mm -hmm. And we did see um, an increase in budget for facility rentals. So I don't know if that was a projection from the program staff hoping. Uh, part of it was we've already, we've been improving. Mm -hmm. And so that as well, though, we feel we'll mm -hmm. get a few more. Yeah. Uh, some other an administration general fund initiatives that I wanted to point out that kind of fall into that large one-time expense category. We have 30,000 budgeted for strategic planning. And we also are going to revisit our salary study this year and actually uh, contract with a new, likely, likely a new um, vendor consultant on, on the salary study. So we don't know exactly what that looks like yet and we'll continue to bring the board up to speed, but it's been several years since we did the initial study with Leading Edge. And at that time, we thought that it needed to be revisited fairly frequently to make sure that all of our ranges are maintained properly and up to speed and any changes that have happened in our positions are reanalyzed on a regular basis. So um, Alex is actually pulling that team together. It's going to be a staff team that will review the positions and grade them and go through the process together. So, and they're gonna select whoever this vendor consultant is. So we don't have um, that yet, but we have a budget established for it. And that falls in line with about how much we spent last time. So um, we're hoping not to change our structure too much because we've been really satisfied with how the process has gone. So we're hoping um, there was some vendors recommended as part of our previous process. We, we're not really sure leading edge is around anymore. Um, so we're hoping there's some other, uh, I've pulled our business manager group and um, management association is the one that most park districts are using. And it's also the one that Abby recommended would be able to pick up our current structure and help us maintain it in the future. So we have communications from Abby about that process from the last time. And um, so anyway, Alex will, I'm sure report back to the board um, as that process moves along. So some of the the big biggies for recreation. One is the um, outreach and wellness itself. When we, when we established the um, or combined the fitness department with our outreach, we didn't have necessarily a a budget. Um, still don't have a ton of budget, but we do have about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for. Um, programming initiatives um, that will combine with all of our um, other departments. Um, so that was a, that's a big one. It's, it's, it's a uh, good enough budget to where we can get some <coughs> really good things in and kind of lay some groundwork for future um, programming and ideas. Good point. I <coughs> should brag a little bit here on the um, play day in the park, our very first one of the year was at Crestview, and we had 134 residents from that area show up. Wow. Um, and what time of day was it? 5.30 to 7. <clears throat> Excellent. So it was uh, well attended, and uh, it was one of the three that the community coalition sponsored. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a great turnout. I was excited to see their response there. So... Um, Moving along, we've got, um, I think it's, it was important for us to point out, while it's not an increase in our budgets, um, we were able to maintain the $3,000 per department for equipment and supplies, um, which we started at last year. It took the money. Um, we were put having that as a capital item, a recreation program capital item. Um, one, we found that um, well, we had more need <laughs> than the, the money that was in there, but we also had a lot of items that really didn't necessarily fall in a capital budget. Um, so this gives the opportunity to move it into our program budgets, and it's 
really helping keep our um, supplies fresh. So we're excited about that. Um, we're moving into our 50th year anniversary at the Nature Center. Um, so we got a um, bunch of upgrades that we're going to be doing in there, similar in, in <coughs> similar in a way that we're going to be doing some painting and, and replacing some things in the facility to give it a fresher look like we did at Phillips. So it's 50 years at Anita Purvis Nature Center. Are we, are we doing any type of celebration? I'm sure they've got yeah, I think so Judy's planning have, that. Oh, yeah. They love she, that. So. Yeah. She's, I mean, got that's that's that. That. she's bringing back programs from all 50 years. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. cool. So she's got lots of plans in place, and uh, it actually will go from the end of this fiscal year into next year. So. Oh, very cool. Um, oh, sorry. Are you we're excited about that. Uh, well, you can read that, too. The coat rack area, we've had a lot of We've always felt for several years now that mm -hmm. it's a wasted space. So and that kind of came out in that facility space study space. as well. Space facility space, space study. So they, they've got some uh, <coughs> ideas for that. <coughs> uh, mm -hmm. The workroom kitchen area is in dire need of being improved. Um, is so that the room with the big table? Yes. And, done, okay. and they do a lot of work in that room yeah. from the programming, the part-time staff, mm -hmm. camp staff. Mm -hmm. Um, just staff meetings, so they do a lot of stuff in that room. So it, it's not really a kitchen in the. Uh, it's got a Break countertop room. and a sink. <laughs> yes, oh, um, I should mention too that workroom pr primarily was not renovated. Basically, the mm -hmm. cabinets and all the basics. Oh that. yeah, it's it was pretty the one space that we kind of pulled out to reduce some of the budget. So because originally there was new infrastructure planned for that space too, and <clears> so it's. I do time to. Uh, we've had some meetings back there, I think. Mm -hmm. No. Do, haven't we? I'm trying to think what we were doing back there. but well, I'm sure yeah, we, we executive session. Ready it is. Yes. Executive we session executive is back session. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Right. We're acquainted with its ready right. condition. And well, I'm sorry, Corky. There, I told Corky that I'd give him the full list that Judy had sent me about those updates, but I put them in my notes and they didn't print on my paper. So Judy also said they're going to be re replacing some equipment like their LCD projectors, yes. um, vending machines um, at, when they upgrade that coat rack space. Mm -hmm. So there, there were some other items that right. didn't wind up on the slide that I meant to give Corky. Sorry. That's all right. I know about all of them <laughs> one at a time as we talked about what she wanted to do. So um, I'm just looking forward to the space being revived and um, I'm excited about it. So awesome. Okay. So I think you all are familiar that we have continued to expand our goose management efforts. Uh, this year we introduced the dog uh, training and uh, nice also the, the laser uh, work. And so those are new budget items for this year. Uh, we budgeted, um, we have a contract of not to exceed $5,000 with um, our, our dog service. Uh, we, we knew we wanted to hit it pretty hard in May, and we did. Um, so we, we, we wrote it into that pretty well. I, I budgeted 7500 so we could add some additional services throughout the year if we need to. And uh, at this point, I think we'll want to. He had a lot of success um, when he first launched the program. He's backed off now. Uh, we're into molt season, and so he's just visiting the site, tw uh, the, the park, uh, twice a week. Uh, and really focusing on a few key areas, but, it, but it's working well. Uh, and then the laser training, that, that's a, a laser that staff have that we can use to um, work alongside the dogs uh, when the dogs aren't present. <laughs> to, uh, Green watch the you give yeah, Janet yeah. the biggest laser, right? I'm sorry? <laughs> Janet gets the biggest, the strongest laser. Well, <laughs> we, we, we have a, a laser we're going to train her staff to use. It's, it's not quite as powerful as Matt's, to be honest, but uh, it's, uh, it'll do a, a good job nearby uh, sure. on the boat docks. Um, boundary surveys, we're continuing our work with boundary surveys. Uh, we've at this point done uh, Southridge and uh, Lowman and uh, we're working with Matt on communicating with some of the uh, parties that have um, um, begun to, to, to have some practices on parkland, whether it be landscaping or fencing and things like that. And so we've got a plan in place uh, that we'd like to continue to, to expand uh, to our other park sites. Uh, we know that uh, at Weber Park we want to do a boundary survey uh, in part through some of this work with the sanitary district, but also through some of our independent investigations. We realize that there's some uncertainties about that boundary. Mm -hmm. We want to better define, uh, particularly between us and the city of Urbana, uh, their, their uh, outdoor storage area. And so we'll be moving forward with that. Um, we are talking now, Leal Park might actually be another spot we want to take a look at. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, along that, that shared property line. 
Uh, dog park gate system, I think Andy covered that pretty well, so no need yeah. to go in depth. In depth. Uh, LED upgrades, uh, we've been wanting to uh, look at our LEDs, uh, our, our lights for some time. This would be interior lights principally. Um, back when I first started as project manager, we worked with uh, DCEO to upgrade a lot of our facilities. Uh, the technology has gotten a lot better, uh, and LEDs are affordable, uh, long-lasting, and there's some really nice paybacks. Uh, for the indoor aquatic center, this would be the, what's left of the lights, and the payback there was, was extraordinary. I think it was like a year. Uh, um, wow. The lake house, uh, we're not going to see as, as great a payback because we're really expanding our light system there. Uh, it's been underlit for a long time Ooh, and yeah. really has some limited use and so we uh -huh. want to add some some track lighting there uh, here at Kerr we're going to do a partial uh, as well as at Phillips and Nature Center uh, focusing uh, on uh, subsets of fixtures that make the most sense in terms of payback uh, or in terms of just um, operating challenge uh, these fixtures actually have been sort of the bane of Shane and his crew's existence <laughs> their, their hands are too big <laughs> to get in and replace the light fixtures with any ease and um, oh, yeah, no. so, uh, we're, we're looking at doing some LEDs that would uh, that would require much less uh, replacement of fixed of like a bulb every time, mm -hmm. uh, and and has some really good payback as well. So uh, that's <laughs> LEDs. Uh, Nature Center Solar. We talked about that at the study session. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing real new to report there. Other than we did budget for it entirety. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're not entirely sure yet w w uh, if we would actually get billed for that. It may be that we have an agreement with our solar vendor that we're only paying that portion after the incentive, which is, as you recall, is quite small. And then playground safety training, uh, we've been encouraging staff for a long time uh, to develop their own development program, and I'm excited that facilities wants to take the next step forward on playground safety training. Keith, for a long time, has been our, our certified playground inspector, mm -hmm. but now the rest of the facilities crew are, are interested in getting uh, trained, and, and what we know is that a lot of them went through stuff, you know, many years back, but the, the industry's changed quite a bit, and we're excited that, that they want to get uh, more up to speed on, on playground safety. And finally, this is the last slide that I have. I just wanted to reiterate, and I know we talked uh, just last week about this project, but just to bring it forward on the revenue and expense side of what the UIAC budget is going to look like this year for the air handling replacement, which I also call the pool plan pool pack replacement. I think when we originally started talking about it, it could have wound up being a different type of unit. It didn't have to be a pool pack. So we were using the air handling unit lingo, uh -huh. but now it really is a pool pack. So either way, we're replacing a pool pack with a pool pack. Um, but anyway, so the top chart shows the partner shares, and this is the, the first 80,000. Our contract says that the first 80,000 of capital expenditures is split 50-50 and anything beyond that is split 60% school district, 40% park district. So that's what this totals to for the project. And then that's broken down into the expenses that Andy had on his memo of the engineering contract and then the fabrication of the unit and the contingency. Now we did, this is the total of the entire project and some of it really did already go to FY18. So we won't see the full 723 in FY19 but we did budget for it so we budgeted for it um, but some of it because we didn't know at the time how much of it would have been split because when we were preparing our budget and finalizing it um, we didn't know the April portion yet so at this point the full things budgeted in um, FY um, 19 but a, some portion of it primarily the engineering wound up as expense in FY 18 so I don't have anything else to say about that so just wanted to give you guys some highlights of our major changes and if you have any questions the budget book will come out with your july board packet so feel free to reach out to me um, if there's any other uh, things that our staff team think of we can talk about them again next month great presentation yeah that was easy. thank you yeah that was good Okay, there was no old business removed from the consent agenda, so we're now on to new business. The first item being action on Ordinance 2018-07, annexing territory. As you can see, Matt Deering prepared the um, ordinance for us. Um, notice on the second page on the Exhibit A, um, it shows the location of the, the lot, the uh, parcel, I should say. Obviously, each year we wish we had many parcels coming to us. 
but we're appreciative of the ones we do. Well, I move to approve Ordinance 2018-07 to annex certain territory to the Urbana Park District. Second. That's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any further discussion or questions on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that carries unanimously. You have to do a roll call. Oh, no, they're suggesting a roll say. call. It should be taken. Okay. Let's try to start at the left this no. time around. Aye. 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 And a, same result. Moving on then to Ordinance 2018-08, revising the personnel policy manual. I can speak briefly to this. We did, uh, when, we, when we met with the policy study group in May, we went over these changes in detail, but this is just shoring up some clarification that our personnel policy needed um, that we discovered was kind of lacking. So it's pretty s basic information and not a lot of wording change, but if anybody has any questions about the specific changes, I can give more background. All right, are we ready for a motion? Sure. Then, okay. Mm -hmm. I move um, <laughs> I move approval of ordinance 201808 revising the personnel policy manual. Second. That's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And it carries unanimously. And we're now to 2000 resolution 2018-09. The fiscal year 2018-2019 CUSR budget. Originally, we had hoped to have Jamil join us tonight. Typically, he'll come over and join us to provide overviews. He was unable to come, so I think we have some information tonight. We're still having some staff challenges with CU Special Rec, so we're uh, looking at some personnel issues and probably some hiring of staff. So. I personally am not a little sorry. Bit of delay, a little bit of delay this year in getting this information. I'm I'm not willing to vote on this without having read it more carefully than just having it sit on the table tonight. And I assume that would move it to to, to July. But I just, it, it, I mean, unless we have to do something, unless it has to be in place before that. But I mean, that's my that's my feeling. But I don't I don't feel I feel like it has to be looked at mm -hmm. more than just oh yeah there it is. Mm -hmm. uh, just so we're. Uh, I know you know this, but technically the Champaign Park District is, as the administrative body, it's right. really their approval. We also feel akin to that, and so July is just fine. Okay. We'd be happy well, to do but that. I don't, I mean, I, that's just my opinion. I don't know how everybody else feels, but that's... Will he be able to attend the July meeting so we can we'll hear from him? We'll either have staff or we'll be ready, so we can definitely handle it. Okay. I mean, it won't, it won't take long once we've had a chance to look through it. Yeah. yeah. And you're asking about if there's anybody else. I absolutely agree with you. I mean, it's, you can't approve a budget that you don't see until it's right. on the right. table okay. at, at, the, so at the meeting. Yeah. Future, is it better to maybe back it up a few months yep. know, as soon as possible? Now, obviously, we're working on their schedule, so it's right. challenging. It's, it's going to be a challenge, but I mean, we'll at least do everything Friday, we can do. The board packet would have been... That would have been fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. That's, all, that's all we need. But right. just zero from time, our perspective, I want you to realize I, we really did get it at 1 o'clock today. I know. Oh, I, I called because I thought maybe it had fallen out of my packet. <laughs> um, and it's been kind of chaotic at my house. Actually, and she said, I got no, the, Corky just got this. It was 12.52 to be exact. That's ah, when I got oh the email. My. Yeah, that's so. just not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So um, I do have a few highlights of things that we're working towards if you want me to mention those things. We do that. Yeah. Would, would you prefer now or at the actual time? Because we'll I, I think it would help. I mean, we'll read, I'll, for me, it'll be, I'll have a more informed read of it if I have yeah. some sense of what's. Okay. I don't know why. So. Geez, that's a big mouse. So, so really what I was going to talk about this evening was more of the things we're working towards the huh? next year, not so much the numbers. The numbers mm -hmm, have not mm -hmm. changed drastically okay. from last year. Um, however, um, some of the big points that we're working on is um, awareness of services offered, which is a strategic plan goal 
throughout Champaign-Urbana. Um, so that's one of the goals we're working towards. They did um, implement and plan a new fundraiser this year. It was a bowl-a-thon, um, which was uh, pretty successful, just like the Cupcake 5K, which is pretty popular. Mm -hmm. um, they've been trying for a few years to do a golf fundraiser. Um, it's, it's never worked, so we decided to go towards the bowling, which is really probably one of the most popular activities that Special Rec mm -hmm. does. Um, so it was pretty successful for its first year. Um, I mentioned the other night at our study session that we're working towards uh, a matrix team, right. which is uh, gonna be made up of Urbana Park District personnel, Champaign Park District personnel, and, and Special Rec. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I think that can help us um, with some of these challenges. Um, so that's one area that we're working towards this year. Um, the advisory committee has been in, in place for a year. However, with staff turnover, it's, um, their meetings have been hit or miss, but they were part of a, um, a facility study. Um, so they're starting to get input from this advisory committee on um, the needs of a facility or um, you know, whether they want to be in a facility that's strictly the CUSR people uh. or is it good to combine or um, the overall census on that was co combination yeah. seemed best because that's what inclusion's all about. Right. And so right. Otherwise it's um, what we've done so far this year is we've included them in two of our teams. One is the health and wellness facility study. Um, or the, the program statement for that. Um, they are recently been brought into that team and they've also been um, put into our remodeled kitchen at Phillips, um, looking at ways that they can program that space. So um, more to come in the upcoming year working on those items. Uh, the sports banquet has changed and will be a change for our um, annual meeting instead of doing awards at the annual meeting um, it will be on the sports banquet night which is in April is that yeah. that's a great idea yeah, yeah. yeah. lots more people in attendance yeah. So, yes yeah yeah so and a lot more I mean so the people who are getting the, right. the, the awards have really have a, a, a the audience they deserve yep. I would say mm -hmm. uh -huh. and I think it also gives um, the annual meetings more of a meeting yeah a business rather meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah so Oh, and idea. is that still set for the first Thursday of December? That's our usual. That's what it, okay. yes. Early December. Okay. Um, besides that, continuing to work forward with um, our staff structure and checking to see, you know, is the way we have it structured now um, the ideal way? Uh, we are having, obviously, some turnover, so we need to look at that, uh, yeah. take a serious yeah. look at it. Um, and then continuing to move through our strategic plan that we have in place there at Special Rec. So um, the committee, the matrix team will be looking at lots of different items, anywhere from our ADA audit and when's it time to renew. We've had some discussions here at UPD and we've talked with them as well. Um, I think, I feel we're probably a little bit more farther along in, in our audit as far as making the updates, but um, they have a lot of questions with their audit. We have some questions with ours now as we get deeper and deeper into it. So um, that'll be something they will look at. We'll have office staff that are involved in that matrix team. So questions that come up within the different offices of and buildings. Um, and then we'll we're looking at our planner being involved with that from the audit standpoint, and then another recreation manager as well. So I'm really excited about that opportunity. I think it can be um, a good communication piece that will help us be more consistent, whether we're in Urbana or in Champaign. Yeah, yeah. What do you see as the main challenges for main CUSR? Issue, I think is yeah. we have a lack of facilities and a permanency. I think it's highly evident if mm. you just drop by. I think the facilities that they have access to visit are certainly very fine. 
They're, we have a number, and Champagne does, but they're most of their time spent in inappropriate and inadequate space. Uh -huh. I think the rub down is staff get tired of that, and they don't see an outlet or an agenda or a priority uh -huh. to that group into an appropriate. Again, it's not in a devious way or any sort of right, right. Intent, but mm -hmm. I think if you're not at the top ever, it's hard to see a future. Sure. So I think it's that simple. So, and that's what's keeping st uh, them from hiring long terms. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think we have the control to change that. Right. Here. So we or have the to bucks. stand by and watch that, and I think it's a challenge. I well, think our it, own board would admit that's a challenge, mm -hmm. and so I don't think I'm speaking out of class or anything. Right. Telling stories, we talk about it all the time, yeah. but to get the prior, you have to take effort. It's just like the effort we're trying to create here moving things up a hill that it's pretty uncertain how far you'll have to go, but right, you still right. have to push uphill. So I think my impression is the staff that have been there for a while don't see opportunity in that area. And so if you get an opportunity or something changes, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think that's a primary issue. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's to me kind of doubly bad because we're becoming much more aware of special populations and the needs of those special populations. And I'm not sure we're, I mean, I, I know they're doing a good job and I don't mean to say that I think they're not, right. but I think that, that the continuity and the, and all of this stuff, quality. the quality of, of what's, of what's, of their, of their surroundings is right. just, it's not, right. it's not good. It's not good enough. And so I, th I see this as a, was going to be a, I mean, I see this sort of as a festering sore or something. We're going to really have to work to, you know, clean out and get going and, and move it along. Right. I think our approach yeah. is continue to talk about the yep. facilities, continue to look at other models, continue to plan for space when we build space yep. so yep. that there's opportunity or at least a hope of it. An example would be our recent discussion with the improvements at Phillips, primarily the kitchen area. I think when the staff was engaged in that process, you could mm -hmm. see a completely different response to their interest you know, how they perceive the space and the opportunities that they could see coming out of that right, right. in mm -hmm. a building in Urbana. So do you do we do we feel that in the in the best of all possible worlds that it would be better for them to have I mean I know we just you just mentioned that all if they would be included in another building rather than their own standalone building. Is it do you think a detriment to them now to be moving from place to place to place to place? Does that seem to be? I'm sure it's difficult. You know, permanency. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I, I meant, but just on a like on a on a weekly basis, they have this program here, they have no. this program there. So I think I think the key is having dedicated space. Uh huh. So they're going to. They're not having. I don't think it's so much that they're moving. It's that they don't have the space that is dedicated right. to them. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I mean, they have Brookins, but it's dedicated one night a week at right. seven o'clock at night yeah yeah and that's not the ideal time right, and they've right. got all those kinds of scenarios at all the different facilities they use so i think you know when we're including them with the health and wellness facility for example we're asking them questions like if you had this multi-purpose room mm -hmm. anytime you wanted it right is that going to help you tremendously or if you had a gym space that was yours on Tuesdays and Thursdays from time you open up in the morning till the time you close, mm -hmm. is that going to, those are the kinds of spaces mm -hmm. they need. I, th I think the moving is actually good. good. Well, yeah, that's it's what It's just that's more of making right. sure mm -hmm. that you have the dedicated time that's right. always mm -hmm. yours, not May and June you get it at this time, but right. then July and August you need to move. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, as we all know in our field, innovative ideas. Hey, can we do, hey, somebody wants to come over. Someone's got an opportunity for us. And if the answer is, nah, we don't have space or time. We only can do it this time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work out, you're, you're done. And so it doesn't really foster creativity or growth or enhancing the program. It's sort of plug in. We're here at this slot at this time, and we're at this slot at another time. And so. It, it's a challenge. Now, we all have those challenges. We all wish we had more right, dedicated right. personal space to offer unlimited. But if you don't have any, I think it's, it's harder to do that. Or it's more rigid, I should say. So you can't flex. If there's changes in the program, it's more impactful. 
I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking to the, I'm in the way back machine thinking about uh, the days of Sandy Klitzing because I thought things went really well there. I wonder, I mean, she's at ISU, I think, still. Retired. Retired. Oh, she did retire. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Because I was thinking she would be, she knows us. Mm -hmm. I mean, us and them all together. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if, if, if she, if, Sandy or somebody like Sandy that that we could go back to and say you know what were your problems how do you how do you see it how do you think we can make this better knowing what we are what this district is is like I think those are topics of discussion the good board okay. should have definitely you know to see do we need help or what would be good yeah, uh, yeah. to do at this point so yeah and somebody that still loves us I mean you know Sandy would be a good mm -hmm. a good choice I think I, I think a lot of it when I say staff analysis and staff structure what i'm really saying is what is the most time consuming and do we have it structured right do we have the right matches yeah, and the balance yeah yeah because i mean inc the inclusion aid process is going crazy i mean we have a lot of which is a good thing yes um, but we haven't done a whole lot to restructure the workload of one staff or another staff or, uh -huh. so that's really what i'm look, talking sure. about and seeing if there's a better combination of tasks. Sure. So. so we have enough aids for the number of participants in CUSR, but not. That's always a challenge, just like finding enough lifeguards to pool. <laughs> okay. I mean, literally, um, they're always hiring because we use a lot more aids between CPD and UPD and s special rec themselves. Mm -hmm. And it changes weekly. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody new comes to camp. You won't know they didn't say they needed an aid and then they get to camp and they say, well, we need an aid. Right. Well, we hopefully have someone, but mm -hmm. well, I just added a new person right. this, this week. week. And it took us two days last week, which isn't bad, mm -hmm. two days last week to actually find one to start on Monday. But so what happens when you don't have enough? I mean, what happens in that case? What's worst case scenario that another aide has more than? Mm -mm. Not so typically, one -on -one. no, it's one-on-one. -on -one. So what happens is usually we have a sub, we have subs, so people that aren't saying I'm gonna be here every day that'll fill in while we're out looking for one that can be there. If we don't have one, they can't come. In this case, um, we didn't have one available, so that family had to wait. So uh -huh. yeah, that, that either worked, or what I would call it a bad, you know. So right, but if you aren't going right. to let people know that you need help, it's a little um, unreasonable to say. <laughs> well, we would think so. Yes, that right. Doesn't well, we still try to do our well, best. I know, our customer service is important, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But still, that just means that it's a harder job for you guys. Which I think that Matrix team will be looking at that process as I well. I bet you they will. Improve our access to yep. aids that would be available yeah. more readily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we have a number of challenges we want to continue to work on. Um, I think there's answers to how to you know, figure that out. But we just need to work as a group and bring both oh. districts together mm -hmm. on it together. So. We always need another challenge. <sighs> okay, so I presume we are not going to take any action here. That's the consensus. <laughs> uh, and let's move on to action to approve uh, accounting software purchase. Katie, it's your big moment. I know. This is, <laughs> there's been a long culmination Everyone's up to fine. this moment, so it's pretty exciting. I wrote a quite in depth memo, <coughs> so if yes, I don't know how much um, background information the board needed me to verbalize, but I'm happy to answer questions. Um, we started on a process that I was writing about in my board reports occasionally um, with the city because they let us know that they were transitioning away from the AS400 and thereby we would lose our support of that system because they would no longer um, staff the programmer that was programming it uh, once she retires. Um, so we, we had a lot of concerns in our staff when we were selecting a system of, you know, right now we have one-on-one -on -one support. I mean, you call Carla and she fixes it. And so 
our staff really love that. And so how do you <laughs> how do you find a vendor that you can call up and say, oh, hey, by the way, we can't figure this out, and, they, and then they fix it. <laughs> so, you know, I think it was just a challenge to um, – Part of the part of the challenge for me was that the two vendors that we were looking at were very similar, and they both had products that would suit our needs. And so finding how they were really differentiated was difficult. Mm -hmm. And what really made one stand out over another, and what was really key to that process for me was going to doing the reference calls, but then really going and visiting the park districts using the system and talking to their business managers in person. And just having that interaction with them and, and they actually sat down at their computer and said here's a report I run frequently and here's a process I do and here's how it looks and here's what it's like um, you know and I, I'm about to enter this check request in. let me show you how easy that is and so um, you know it was really a good experience and it kind of solidified me and Karen and Sandy all went to those field mm -hmm, trips mm -hmm. and we left unanimously agreeing that BSNA was the better suited product for us um, I think Tyler Encode still is a great product and would have worked for us too, but I think we felt really great about being secure in our decision that we knew that it was going to work out best if we use BSNA and um, the costs are within our budget and that made us feel good. Um, in fact, the ongoing costs are going to be less than we pay now for Carla at the city, so that is great too. Um, I kind of mentioned earlier that we might have a change order and that was referenced in the memo too because we're also looking right now this week, we're actually having some web demos for timekeeping systems. So we don't know if we're gonna go with a timekeeping system, but the BSNA kind of opens the door for integration for us because right now we're manually keying in all of our timesheets oh into God. the AS400 for all 300 plus, you know, employees in the summer. Um, and so if, with a timekeeping system, the employees keep punch in, punch out themselves. And that electronic data is imported into your accounting system. And it still requires supervisor approval. It still requires proofing. You know, there's, there's checks and balances there, but the actual keying in doesn't have to happen. So, and that would save on a lot of our, uh, we would, we would see a lot of efficiency in our office with that. So, but right now, the way the proposal is, they're assuming we're continuing manual entry. So there may be a change order. The systems we're looking at are all systems they already integrate with. So we were hoping for a smooth conversion if we do mm -hmm. um, have an ad additional cost for a conversion. We're hoping it would be minimal, but that's why I built the contingency into the, the project, just because we have some known things that we know we might wind up working through, so. Um, but it's been a, I don't know, what else should I say, Derek? Derek's really helped me along the way. I, 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 one of the things that I think, in addition to the site visits, that, that's really notable about BSNA is the extensive support they offer in the transition. Mm -hmm. That's really important because you've got a lot that you're doing on top of this major transition. Yeah, uh, Tyler and, and the other products that we previewed quoted more of like a 50-50 workload as far as like the staff um, vendor workload split for the implementation. Like they're doing 50% of the work and they're expecting you to do 50% of the work and they're telling you what you have to do, but you have to do it. And BSNA um, advertises an 80-20 workload split, but it became really clear when we did the reference calls, because I kind of questioned that. I'm like, really? And when I did the reference calls and the visits, it was really clear that that is a really true statement. They really do. And that's the way that, that it's quoted. I mean, they're quoting that they're going to be on site for seven weeks. So um, throughout the implementation, not solid, they come at different phases of the process, depending on what you're doing at that time, because you, you do financials first, and then you come back and do payrolls later. So there's a couple different phases of the project where they come on site. So, you know, we, we feel really good about that, and that we'd be fully supported. And So in addition to your day-to-day um, your -day and everything being more let's say up to date the types of reports that we will see going forward will also they will change okay will change for the better i hope i hope for the better um i think <laughs> i mean part of this process to be honest is um 
that we really want an off the shelf product. We don't want to pay for a lot of customizations. So if there's specific things the board has to see, and that's going to be a customization that's going to cost us. And so really it might wind up just being sitting down and saying, here's what our board's used to seeing and them saying, well, this is the closest we have. And then we decide if we're okay with that or not. Um, so, and I've told, and not just with reporting, but I've, I've kind of let it known to staff that it's going to be like that with a lot of things. Like we might be doing it that way in the AS400 because it was built that way just for us, but our new product might not do that. And there might be processes that we need to change or, and they, you know, they might change for the better or we might have to adapt to them. So, you know, we don't, we're not really particularly in, in, it's not in my mind that we'll be doing a lot of customization. So, but I, I think from the other people that I spoke to, the reporting is great. There's a lot of options for selecting different, the ways that filters and ways that you the information you want to see and it's it's built for local governments so it's fund accounting it's all of the things that that we need so well if you guys have to learn a whole lot of new stuff i expect we could kind of drag ourselves yes. <laughs> learn a thing or two try to well. make it easy for you yeah and so I assume their reporting is available in a way that you can bring it into excel mm -hmm. and you can then manipulate it manipulate it to generate some customized reports of a sort that you, that you could do in-house, right? Yes, it, I agree. And and it's really interesting that you say that because, I mean, I'm producing some board reports for you in Excel already, like, for example, the capital report, but there's, there's no export. I mean, there's just printing out on pieces of paper the transactions that have happened in the S-400 and then keying them into the Excel file for you guys for the report you see. So, I mean, it's going to be a time saving for me. It's going to be time saving for, for everyone, I think. And, and yes, they do. You can export it to Excel and then it's there for you. And, and there's a lot that went into, there's a lot of like templates you create, like you might create them in Excel, but then you populate them over with a import from the system with the current day's data. So there'll be different things like that, that, that will that I'll learn. Did you say it would require a change order to do this uh, timekeeping entry? It would it would require a change order with the vendor because it's not in their current proposal. But as long like as the you just do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as the, well, we don't we don't have a vendor selected or anything. Okay, we don't know what but, the cost would be. Uh -huh. But I mean, that's why there's that contingency built in because as I'm long as the change this. order is within the contingency amount, we don't have to come back to the board for further Good. approval. Okay. So we would just hope that it's in line with our expectations and then move forward. And that yep. change order would be for BSNA to work with whatever vendor we chose. Yes, right. to create the, right. the conversion right. of the data. Gotcha. What about graphs? <laughs> graphs? <laughs> I'm working on graphs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, um, colors. <laughs> I move to approve the proposal for yes, software and services in the amount of $115,120 and a 15% contingency of $17,268 uh, with BSNA Software of Bath, Michigan, and authorize um, Board Vice President Nancy Del Coman to approve the final contract. Whoa, second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion or questions? I have one more discussion item just based on the motion. I just wanted to let you know, we included the draft contract in the um, packet, but we're actually at Sanford from the city's reviewing it for us. He's already sent us back his comments. Matt's reviewing it. It was just sent to me last week. Uh -huh. So the proposal is really what we're asking you to approve tonight. We're not expecting um, the pricing to change in the draft contract. All the pricing is still the same. It's just more of the legal legal words and um, the liabilities and things like that that we'd like legal to review. And that's what we're asking Nancy to approve later on. Any other questions or discussion? So I believe the motion is uh, on the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that carries unanimously. Okay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> it's been a long process. Long process. Really long. There's still a lot to do. Is the actual doing. Yeah, new yeah. process. Yeah. Right. Okay. We should, the, the proposed schedule is to um, begin implementation immediately after the audit. That's when they'll come and have like the implementation like um, visit 
where we talk through a lot of our needs and then they'll go off and start programming the system and then we'll go live. So then they'll come on site and do the full implementation and we'll go live with the financial side like December, January, and we'll go live with the payroll side like um, in spring before our summer season. Wow. So hopefully it really will all be in this fiscal year now. So we've set the ball rolling. Okay, moving on, we're to comments from commissioners. I have a comment. So um, we mentioned earlier in the meeting about UPDAC and planning for UPDAC, and um, I would encourage us to think about, again, how we're using UPDAC. I had some feedback from um, a current member that m might be a little heavy on the um, education and not enough on the um, action, maybe we'd say. And I know we've constantly struggled with how to onboard new members and all this information so maybe it's time that um as you're thinking as we're thinking about updack and its value and i'm not on the subcommittee or the what do we call uh study group thank you study group but maybe we think about something about and a special onboarding session for and you do this but mm -hmm. trying to tailor it again um i know it's hard with people going off every year um but i didn't i just didn't rem like to remind us to be really intentional with the use of that committee and make sure there's something meaty that they're working on yeah the difficulty is that there's not always something meaty that they can really th that's worth worthy of their time I you, you know one thing that that doesn't happen mm -hmm. is we we don't do kind of an open-ended um we, we did some of that when we did the strategic planning it mm -hmm. got kind of open-ended and i've felt us going in directions that were a little different and I, I I think sometimes um we got too much direction um mm -hmm. and 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 maybe um need a little less uh it, just in terms of a more open-ended time if there is and and that usually happens at the end of a long meeting where we course, say right. does that's anyone right. from up deck have any comments and it's all like uh, uh, I, yeah, it's pretty late you yeah, know yeah so that's 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 just my thought uh, after a, a year of chairing it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a long time since I was on the up deck end of things, but there was considerably less input from staff. I mean, we I, I really felt it was a much more autonomous group. Do you, is that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's not that we don't want your, I, I mean, I think the education and, and is mm -hmm. necessary, but I, I'm guessing there we need to figure out a, a balance. Um, and how we best utilize, I mean, I, and I would suspect that, you know, my perspective is some, when people have multiple things going on in their lives, they need to feel like they're contributing and it's worth their yeah, time. Absolutely right. And I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to indicate that that was not the case, but I just want to remind us to be cognizant of that right. as we're yeah. planning for the upcoming year. I agree. So. I mean, absolutely essential. If you're asking people for their time, they got to feel that, that they're right. getting well used. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of people that are just used to being a working group, you know, and I mean, we talked about it off and on, even when I was on UPDAC about, you know, yes, they're working and they're sharing their input and bringing in their resources and supporting staff for various initiatives and projects that, you know, you guys are doing. But I mean, with the number of experiences that you know the number of different people that come into the group um you know we we certainly don't want them to feel like they're bored or you know not really contributing in a manner that they feel that they could and and i would say i would take full responsibility as a board member of you know in in lieu of us providing a a specific and well designed charge you know you do what you do best <laughs> And you fill in the gaps, <laughs> and 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 so I just think we as a board need to continue to revisit that. What is it um, we would, you know, right. like UPDAC to well, be doing for maybe us? Maybe it would be a good idea as, as as the years go along that we poll the third years and ask them what what they think because by the third year they will have had plenty of information and they will have a sense of how things are going and they may better be better able to contribute ideas that will keep us moving moving along and keep it a more viable group and I yeah don't and know that we do that very well and you know I'd be curious to I'd be open to other ideas right now we just have a 
like I don't see our engage. We have representatives for UPDAC, and then we have the report. But is there a different way that would be more effective in the engagement mm -hmm. with UPDAC? And so just sort of putting those things out there and thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the report is is nice, but um, you know. I mean, even just we have an annual meeting, for example, with the foundation. Maybe there's something where we do an annual meeting with UPDAC. I don't know. Well, I will say that in the, in the old days that the majority of the board came to the, came to the UPDAC meetings. I mean, I, and I don't expect that now because times have changed, have changed so much. Um, but, it, yeah, it, it, it's really... It's difficult to drag this group into this sort of next era, if you will, to find to find a way because people are busy. Er, I think I think their lives are <clears throat> are much fuller, and and we didn't have a whole lot of young people in the old days. <laughs> in the old days, either. But considering we have recent expertise and participants, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's. A you know, just always good to keep revisiting that. That's a really good point. That's all. Any other commissioner comments? Well, hearing none, uh, we have exhausted our uh, agenda, and I will declare us adjourned.